does it have barbecue sauce on it? Someone's like, uh, yeah, Ryan, that's why it's a, a barbecue chicken pizza. And he's like, oh, my doctor tells me I could die if I eat barbecue sauce. <laughs> and he's just, like, munching away on this pizza. And he, like, goes in for another slice. And my boss is like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> he's like, but it's good. He's like, yeah, but you just said, your doctor said that it could kill you. He's like, yeah, but I'm hungry. <laughs> That actually, that actually reminds me that I had my roommate from my freshman year of college. Uh, he's, I guess, I don't know if it's, I guess it's genetic. He's Chinese. They don't handle alcohol very well. I don't know if you know yep. about this. So yeah, yeah. he's it completely like fucks up his skin if he drinks, but he just kept doing it for no reason. Like he's like an idiot. He's like, you're clearly allergic to it. And he's just like, I don't understand people. Why, why do you, why do people do these things to themselves? It's not. Are we talking like like full on puffy skin? Like he would get like rashes? Yeah, and... uh, not not like hospital worthy or anything. But yeah, it's clearly like like messing up. It's like getting all like red and weird. I don't know, man. Maybe he was drinking to forget. <laughs> Dr- drinking to forget the pain that drinking caused him. It's a vicious cycle. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. God, I can't believe I can't drink. I better have another drink just to forget. Pretty much, yeah. Is there anything else? Uh, I assume you played like twenty minutes of a game. Actually, I got to, I got to play uh, I got to play quite a bit of game this week. Note, I said game. Yeah. Because because it was really the same game, and it was the same like three hours, like three different times. I'm talking about System Shock too. Yeah, I think yeah. you used to try to rope me into that. I was busy. Well, that was that was something that that uh, I don't know if you saw my tweet. Yeah. Where I was like, I wonder if Austin Yorsi is going to get in on this because I want him to eat some crow every time he dismisses the game offhand. I didn't dismiss this shock. What? You, you do. You dismiss the game offhand. You're really? all like, it's, yes. <laughs> I don't remember that. Yeah. You're always you're always like, oh well, when people say that System Shock Two is a better game, they don't really have any arguments to support that, and I'm like, yes, they do. I. I, I just think it's kind of like just Morrowind syndrome, where it's perfectly good, but you know, guys, Mor- Morrowind is a better game. It's it's it's. <sighs> See, well, this is the conversation that I don't want to have because Morrowind and System Shock Two are very very good, but not objectively as good as their successors. Morrowind Morrowind is better than Oblivion, and it is at least comparable to Skyrim. I, there's no arguing with you. You just you're not going to see reason. So uh. I, it's not a case of reason. There are facts. There are undeniable facts. Newton's seventh law is that Morrowind is a better game than Oblivion. It's funny though because are you going to correct Isaac Newton? <laughs> the level of fandom you have to be like to be in into games so much that you you can see the differences. You're like, oh yeah, the way that the you know sneaking skill works in Morrowind is so much better than Oblivion. That is like how I feel about like. Fire Emblem and Pokemon, and that is so foreign to you. I guess it's just, <laughs> it's like we, <laughs> it's just two different kinds of the same thing. No, I mean, I can, I can, I can make acknowledgements that there are problems with the games. I'm not saying that they're perfect. That's not, that's not what I'm saying at all, but I'm saying that they are, they are better games. I mean, without a doubt, the sneaking system is better in, uh, in, in, in Oblivion and, uh, and Skyrim, but, that that doesn't that doesn't mean that the game by default is better. The level design in Morrowind is better. The art design is better. <clears throat> the plot is better. <clears throat> the variety of skills, the magic system, everything. Well, not everything, you know. But but basically, like most of the fundamental tenets that that make up the game are are better. With like what the exception of of perhaps the combat, the stealth system, and that's it. I mean, what about the visuals? <laughs> Well, yeah. you're gonna you're gonna pull out the mods on me here. Is that what you? I, I am gonna pull out the mods. Morrowind Overhaul makes it look better than Oblivion. That's not fair. I, yes, it is. It's completely fair. Is it? Yes, you it's totally gi- fair. You can't give the modding community or gi- give the game credit for things that people did to it. No, but what I can do is I can say, hey, install this mod. This game now looks better than this other one that used to look better than it. Like you, you can't, you can't discount mods. You can't say, "Oh, it's only a better game if it looks better." It looks better than Oblivion with Morrowind Overhaul. Way better. Way better. There's, there's no, there's no fighting you on this. So that's because I'm right. You can't, you can't fight the truth, Austin. The truth will find a way. <laughs> oh, you can fight the truth. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. I suppose I suppose you can. <laughs> you do this thing called politics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh god, my mic's muted. Oh my god. You realize what this means, Austin? I mean, I can go to bed yet. No, it means that you've been out Canada. Oh yeah. Well, I, yeah, that's. I faced your combined forces before and lived to tell the tale. Everybody hates those podcasts when there's more Canadians than Americans. I know. We're going to talk about poutine. That sounds delicious. Why don't we have that? And how the Leafs have absolutely just blew their last game. Did they? I don't know. They were like 4-1 in the third period with 10 minutes to go, and they are 4-4 going to overtime. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Game 7. Jeez. Go Leafs. No, not really. I, I mean, I, come on, James. I, I, live, I live in British Columbia. Do you honestly think I'd be rooting for hey, the Leafs? the Canucks. Uh, where did the Canucks go? I can't remember. Oh, God, they laid down and died, man. Okay. It was it was a steamroll. It was 4 and 0. Oh. They just got the, like they got stomped. It was it was kind of pitiful actually. Uh, you guys can answer my question. Poutine, what? that's the that's the fries, right? That's fries with gravy and cheese curds. Now people are doing shit like adding chorizo sausage and bacon to it and everything. I'm like, yeah, Dude. I don't know why America hasn't gotten up on this. It's like fried shit and cheese and gravy. Dude. New York Fries has, like, pulled pork poutine, butter chicken poutine. See, that's fucking amazing is what that is. Why? I mean, this so there has this to is like why yeah. America's educational system is falling behind, because yeah. apparently they're not smart enough to know that, like, butter chicken poutine is the shit. Listen, it's this. Fries plus gravy plus cheese equals amazing. Basic math. I want it so bad. Why? Why is it? It's really, it's really good. Yep. Well, why wouldn't it be available? I feel like America should be all over that. I don't know. It's the same way like we're saying today. Why doesn't Five Guys have drive through or delivery? I would never leave the house again. I don't think a lot of people would. <laughs> then again, if Fat if Fat Burger had delivery, I'd probably never leave the house again. I'm looking. I'm I'm just like googling like poutine Tallahassee. I have to find it. See if they have any. There's. It looks like there's a place that has it, but the review says it's not authentic. I don't know what that means. It's how you fuck up fries and gravy, you fucking idiots. Well, it's it's because poutine classically is cheese curds. Yeah. <clears throat> but a lot of like restaurants that you go to are just like whatever. We'll just use cheese. Yeah, grated. I know that's like grated thing. cheese, but it doesn't work. Yeah, not that that's a fucking problem because you are talking about fries with fucking gravy and cheese on it. <laughs> like that's. You want the good stuff? You gotta brave the cold up here. So yeah, go check it out. Get your poutine on. It's worth it. Believe me. <clears throat> right. What, Austin? I was saying, I don't know if you were trying to do, like, instigate an America-Canada fight, but I, that, that, I'm not going to say anything on that one. No, it's not really an America-Canada fight. We had the good sense to keep alcohol legal here for as long as the Canadian Charter has existed. We also burned down your White House. <laughs> Go before, it was even, before it was even white, as a matter of fact. Everybody was all like, what's that? And Americans are like, it's the off-White House. It's not, not quite white. Well, and then they were like, White House. A bunch of fire damage, and then they were like, oh shit, we better whiten that up. <clears throat> That's and racist. also slavery! That is racist. Slavery is pretty right. racist, yeah. <laughs> Not necessarily. I mean, you know, like, race specific slavery is racist, absolutely. Johnny, have we ever had a minority on this podcast? I don't think so. Racist. No, I'm. I'm not suggesting, I'm not suggesting yeah. that the British... historical slavery isn't racist, but uh, what I'm just saying is that equal opportunity slavery is a thing. Men, women, children, black people, white people, Latinos, Jewish people, Arabs, yeah, everybody, do what I tell you to. Slavery. I think that only works for a certain amount of people, though, like Obama. It made, it made it sound like you were, like, pro-slavery there. No, I'm just pro-equality. Austin, there's, there's there's a difference. Everyone if should I'm, just be as miserable as the next guy. If I'm going to have one slave, I think everybody should have to do what I tell them to. Uh, Can you come up with a compelling reason why that's not the case? I don't even know if I have the energy to deal with this right now. Didn't think so. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another stirring episode of The Obvious Gourmet. Yes, here on The Obvious Gourmet, we are going to be giving the most thorough look, the most in-depth analysis of restaurants that you've already been to. So today, 
I, your host, Johnny Maloney, joined with my co-host, Mr. Oskin Yorski, and our special guest, James Casenzo, are going to be discussing, in great detail, McDonald's. What? what do you guys think about McDonald's, huh? Uh, I like the fries. They make, really they make like burgers. the fries. They make burgers. I'm pretty sure those tank. are cardboard. That's 100% cardboard. Austin? I haven't been to McDonald's in, like, years. I don't really do fast food anymore. Come on. This is supposed to be an in-depth analysis here. I, I will in-depth analyze Five Guys. Five Guys is delicious. We're not talking about Five Guys, because not everybody has been to Five Guys. This is the obvious gourmet, you, not the inobvious gourmet. Do you guys not have those in Canada? Actually, I do. Oh, you're uh, so nice. I don't think we... Uh, I have one over here, though. I have one that's, like, just down the street from my house. I have so good. Good. I, I picture Canada as just, like, one frozen tundra, but you guys are not in the same Canada, are you? Oh, no. Which Canada are you guys in, and how far away are they? Um, I don't know. How, what is the dis- distance between Vancouver and Edmonton? Uh, I know it in driving time. It takes a day. It, it takes about a day to drive, so probably probably about the same distance as, um, oh, oh I don't know. Oh, wait, I, when I was in high school, I did, we had a band trip down to... We had a banter down to Vancouver. It was about 12, 14 hours. Well, like I mean, you know, 20. That's that's in a bus or something like that. But yeah, you you can do it in about a day. You can you can do it. In a yeah, day. you can. I think we left in the like before the sun came up, so it was like 5 a.m. We got there around seven. That completely shatters my illusion that Canada is like all one small town. <laughs> I uh, yeah, and I mean the the area of Canada that I live in isn't even actually that that frozen a tundra. Yeah, it's like to, raining all the time. To, to put this, no, it is not like raining all the time. I will have you know. To put this in perspective, when Vancouver hosted the Winter Olympics in uh, in 2010, there was a one million dollar budget for snow. Yep. Yeah, they had, like import it. <clears throat> yeah, to truck snow in, in Kelowna from like other mountains to make sure that that the ski slopes were adequately covered. Those mountains, like I don't know, how far away are they? Like a couple hundred kilometers. Oh, not not from like where I am now. What's a kilometer? A kilometer is a sensible distance of measurement. It sounds like some bullshit. <laughs> That's what it like, sounds that, like. That civilized countries use to measure a uh, uh, car speed. Oh, so like shut up, Johnny, because kilometers suck. Uh, no, as in like shut up, Austin. The imperial system makes no goddamn sense. You guys are no jealous. Sense. You guys are jealous. No, no. why would I be jealous <laughs> of your feet? And your yards? You can't play football without yards. I have a decameter, so in your face. I'll deca you in the face. <laughs> and, and also, also, if you measure your anatomy in centimeters, everything sounds like it's way bigger. I see, I don't need to use that trick, because I'm already comfortable with myself, Johnny. I'm sorry that you have to abuse the system of weights and measures to make you feel good about yourself. <laughs> Oh, why am I laughing? Johnny's just sitting there crying himself to sleep. He's like, it's not that bad in centimeters. Fuck you, Johnny. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Austin. I'm sorry that your whole six feet doesn't doesn't stack up to 170 centimeters. Well, you know he Googled that. I'm 6'4", thank you. Oh, well, then. Actually, I think we should clear this up because some people were confused. I, I don't know, remember where I think it might have been on Twitter, but how old is everyone here? I th- some people were under the impression that you were a lot younger than you really were. Yeah, ap- apparently, apparently, I um one one of our one of our listeners was uh, interested to learn that I'm that I'm 33 years old, <clears throat> and I, I was kind of like, yeah, I mean, you know, That's about right. I'm always. I'm always calling Austin like you know the baby on the podcast, and I'm like the old man and stuff. And he's like, "Oh, I th- I thought you were joking." No. And I was like, "33 is not that old." It's pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> You're I'm traveling 22. down the hill, and I'm 120. I'm not. I'm not traveling down the hill yet, James. The hill. I believe the hill technically is 40. No, it's that's 50. that's the hill. That's when you're over the hill at forty. But everybody knows that fifty is the new forty. So fifty is now the hill. Yeah, it's a roving hill. Yeah, it's weird. It's like that part in the book Nicobobinus. You just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> not a real word. Actually, no. It it, it it was it was a book. It occurs to me that listeners may not know who James is because he doesn't show up on the site as much anymore. Do we want to preface that, or are we just going to let them deal with it? Let's let's give James a proper introduction. Hello, my name is James Kostanzovich. Born in land of ice and snow. 
one man will rise above the Canadian peons and prove himself to be king of the MOBAs. He is James Costanzo. God, I wish I was the king of MOBAs. What I play is I might as well be king of the Monster Hunter. Oh, God. You are everything I hate, James. Monster <laughs> Hunter, League of Legends. MOBAs, MMOs. Oh, God. I'm your antithesis. I'm your yeah. antithesis. If we, this was a comic book, you would be my villain. Or vice versa, I would be your villain. I'm not sure which. What does that make me, if this was a comic book? Would I be the editor? You'd be the slapstick comedy. <laughs> you'd be the sidekick. You'd be... Why the slapstick? No, you, no you'd, be the, you'd be the wise mentor figure. Who is also a lecher. <laughs> oh, and, no. That, that... And possibly a drunk? Okay, so taking this analogy to its natural conclusion, in this situation, right, I'm, am I Batman? Johnny is Alfred. That makes James the Joker. What is Leon? Is he like the the first Robin who died? No, I think Leon's Commissioner Gordon. Uh, hmm. There's a bit of a begrudging respect, but you just know that there are these moments where Commissioner Gordon realizes to himself, what the fuck? <laughs> I just had a serious conversation with a dude in a skin-tight outfit <laughs> dressed as a bat. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, yeah, that's and that's why I think that James. Uh, that, that's why I think that Leon is Commissioner Gordon because he's like he has he has those moments where he's like, "What the fuck?" What about Taylor? I feel like he'd be like a really ineffective villain. He'd be like Man Bat. Um. No, no, no. I know exactly what Taylor is because you collude with Taylor. The two of you geek out about Fire Emblem all the time, but it's obvious that his like you know he he doesn't quite get as much done. You know, doesn't have as much fandom. He's not good at it, is what you're trying to say? (laughs) I'm trying to say that, that, no, it's not that he's not good at it. It's just that, like, you know, as the comic book character, he doesn't, they don't use him well enough, you know? Oh, oh, he's Nightwing. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. So I was was thinking that he's he's either one of the Robins, maybe Nightwing, or possibly even Batgirl. (laughs) Taylor is Batgirl. Yeah, he's I certainly he is pr- he is certainly pretty enough to be Batgirl. <laughs> True. Okay. Not that I think that Batgirl's quality as a character should be judged on her looks alone. <laughs> Just cover that one up real quick. What I'm trying to say <laughs> is that I don't think Batgirl is used to the fullest extent of of her capability, except for some series that they did, like uh, when they did the Birds of Prey comics. Nerd. Oh, the only reason Batman comic I, was, I read was. Battle for the Cow or War for the Cow? I can't remember what it was. Is that the one where they battle for the Cow? Yeah, where they they had to choose the next Batman because Batman. He got didn't he get pulled back in time or some shit? Yeah, and then he reappears uh, in the next comic series, I believe. Can I just say that comics are fucking ridiculous? Yes. All right. Good. <laughs> Moving on. One hundred percent in agreement. <laughs> uh, that was all the, right. That was the sound of madness. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of that. I'm kind of disappointed that I came, uh, I got onto a podcast where Austin fully over his awakening binge. He's not really. This man needs help. Well, okay, this is this is just a recurring feature now. I'm going to ask everybody who comes on here who has played Fire Emblem, who did you marry? Uh, you mean my character, my avatar? Uh, I <laughs> of course, married... that's what I meant. I don't actually think that we are in the game as ourselves. That my would ma- be weird. My male, char- my male avatar character married Darja. Okay. Because I'll allow it. <laughs> that that was because that was like the te- the context between them was like creepy as hell. <laughs> Did you play again as a female avatar? Yeah, but um, I kind of got dissuaded. Uh, I kind of fell off the bandwagon because when I I was starting to play hard more and more, and I was like, this is just an uphill battle that I will eventually lose. I will <laughs> I will just and I will stand there crushed. So I'm just going to leave now. Aww. God, everyone I know is a complete and total pussy. Like, I suck at video like, games. Okay. All right, it's like okay, I'll play hard. Let's get let's get Frederick up to level ten or level twenty. No problem. Everyone else is at level two. No, see that's that's the that's the trick. You never let the uh, the early game. I know, but the thing is, that, the thing is, is that everyone's like level seven, and they still get killed by people like they get royally schooled by people like a level below them. I fucking hate you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, Johnny. We got we got it out of the way though. Yeah, it'll be quick this time. I'm done. Do you guys want to talk about how Nintendo hates gay people? Nintendo hates gay people so much, guys. Yep. They hate gay people. Never thought it's weird because it's weird because they they're the ones who introduced Birdo. So you... And like Nintendogs. <laughs> Is Nintendogs gay? <laughs> 
I don't. I want. I want to say yes. <laughs> I'll get the link here. I just I'll get the link here. I mean, you know, <clears throat> uh, uh, taking care of of small animals. You know, like there 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 reaches a point in time where like the smallness of the animal goes from being a, a child responsibility to being you know like a hamster. A, a hamster's a hamster's not gay. There's nothing gay about having a hamster. It's childish. It's childish to have a hamster. But it's like a chihuahua, you know? I have like no a, idea what you're talking about. A Yorkie? I'm like small dogs. All right, you want to know a random, a random tidbit about this podcast? I'm currently making a list of titles. Of all the stuff that we've just that we've used in the past like ten minutes. T- Taylor I, is Batgirl. Hamsters. Taylor are is gay. Batgirl. Hamsters are gay. No, hamsters are not gay. I'm, I'm, hamsters are juvenile. <laughs> hamsters are child. Guinea pigs are gay. No, oh, wait. I can't remember. I, I, are gay. But are gay. it's like it's once you hit like it's once you hit past a certain size, but then not yet another size. Because like a, a a dachshund. Nah, a dachshund's not. A dachshund's kind of weird because it's, it's stupid. Dach- and they like like a. One of, a wiener dog? Is that how they're called? I thought it was Dachshund. Uh, <laughs> it's da- isn't it? It's, ger- it's German. It's Dachshund. It's like, oh, okay. Uh, it actually means badger dog. I think that's literally something, what it means. Something like that, yeah. Um, you know, th- I mean, they're weird. It's weird to own a, a, a Dachshund, but, like, they chew rocks. They're strange dogs. But, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not gay. It's like owning, owning a, a Yorkie? I don't know. Johnny, you're digging this hole so deep. I know. <laughs> or we actually just get to the why Nintendo hates gay people. I know, we probably left people in like 20 minutes. Just like, percent. this tangent just went straight on the Autobahn out of here. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. Johnny, just you just like, hold on, let me, let me li- read you a list of animals that are gay and not gay. <laughs> Alright, yeah. hang on, we need to figure this out. Woodchuck, totally gay, right? Viper, <laughs> Woodchuck, not gay. Not gay, no, no. Mongoose, How mongoose, mongoose, gay. Giraffes. G- giraffes are bicurious. Giraffes, giraffes are pretty fanciful. They are pretty fanciful, but they can get pretty brutal. They've got like I don't know how long. How long is their the neck? It, I I'm not sure. Like I, don't know any giraffes. I don't know any giraffes personally. Oh, okay, <laughs> it's okay, guys. I have a giraffe friend. That yeah. makes this I'll, I'll 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 ask him later. I'll post it. The point that I'm trying to get at is is that taking care of an electronic dog. I think at that point in time, there's a suggestion of sexual confusion. Because you should be talking to... Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, I can't even keep a straight face on it anymore. <laughs> See, the thing is, this isn't even on the point, because now we're just talking about Nintendogs, which is not the story. I, I realize that. I'm going to have to put a disclaimer before this, so that none of these views reflect anyone involved. <laughs> <laughs> None of the things said on this podcast actually reflect anything that we would like to say to anyone <laughs> ever in, in a situation considered to be in good taste. Ever. Listen to at your own risk. <sighs> I mean, you know, we've already discussed how slavery, equal opportunity slavery is okay. Now it's out in the open and Ted Dogs is gay. So is Second Life for that matter, but... Okay, know, so that's you know. really gay. <laughs> Hundred percent so agree on that one. The news, the news, the news story. Okay, um, is actually uh, that uh, Nintendo's sim game, uh, which I believe is called a Tomodachi Collection New Life, that's on the 3DS. Um, users were kind of excited to, uh, uh, well, some users, I suppose I should say. We are talking about video games. People who like react really badly when you know you're playing Dragon Age 2, and then suddenly a dude is like, "Hey, your pants." I want in them. Then they're like, Whoa! Um, but you know, some users was, were delighted to, uh, to to see that in Tomodachi Collection New Life, uh, male me's were actually capable of marrying other me's. Other male me's. Other other male me's. So that was like you know, party, rock on, Nintendo, progressive. Well, uh, turns out that that's a bug. Uh, Nintendo has has full on admitted that that the ability to uh, to gay marry in New Life uh, is a bug, and uh, in a statement um, about a new patch, the updates include and and I love this: the inability to boot up the game is addressed. Error messages are addressed. The inability to save and here comes the money shot: human relations that become strange. Do you know what I'm taking away from this whole article? 
So there's the there's no uh, <laughs> the bug doesn't entail the females. That is interesting. Just notice that male me. So I was like, I thought it was both of them. It's like, oh no, it's not. Makes you think. I'm sorry. I just I love that I love that phraseology. Human relations that become strange. Yeah, I that that is it may be a translation thing. Like maybe that's not a rude way to say it in Japanese, but essentially they're like, yeah, we're gonna fix that weird homo shit. <laughs> And, and then that's pretty much what they're saying, yeah. And then they patch it, and then all of a sudden you you boot up you boot up the game again, and all of a sudden your me is in bondage gear. <laughs> it would, <laughs> wouldn't it be like fantastic? Relations that are real strange. <laughs> wouldn't it be fantastic if if you boot it up? Yeah, if they patch the game and you boot it up, and then suddenly everybody's gay. <laughs> yeah, like that. <laughs> Every subsequent patch makes it way worse. Like now you can mail now you can marry trees and mailboxes and stuff. <laughs> Inanimate objects. Now it's just something, just an orgy simulator. Oh god, we can't stop it. <laughs> I swear, I swear it keeps happening by accident. Revert to release, revert to release. Meanwhile, there's like one guy in their coding department who's just like, <laughs> oh, Show you for putting me on Nintendogs. Yeah, that's right. So, um, that's, uh... That's, that's something. That's, well, I mean, it's it's a bit weird because I mean, I'll go ahead and be honest with you. I like, I I recognize the fact that when something that you haven't designed into your game pops up, that as a coder, as a programmer, as a designer, you would want to remedy that. You would want to fix it. Um, yeah. But at the same time, that's hardly a harmful bug. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's kind of something. Unless it was like you know, if it was a component. Of of like a game crash or something like that. Yeah. That's like you know oh, okay yeah we have to fix it because it makes the framework unstable blah blah blah. But I mean. Well uh, yeah you you'd can... honestly have to look at like coming from a having game dev experience you'd have to look at like it would be pretty interesting if that the if uh, the uh, the fact that male me's can marry male me's like fixes the rest of the stuff. It. I, I kind of have to assume that it, it doesn't, that yeah. it has absolutely nothing to do with the other stuff, because they specifically point it out. You know, it's not like, oh, we fixed some crashes, some stability problems, some error message problems, and as a result of that, you know, this other thing happens. But they very specifically address the fact that they are they are getting rid of human relations that become strange. Yeah, well... And it, it just, it kind of strikes me as, is that like, that's that's going out of your way, kind of? Yeah. It's, and that's that's what rubs me the wrong way about this story is is them basically saying, oh my god, we can't have that. That needs to be fixed right now. Well, I mean, the onus isn't on them. To, they don't need to have you know gay representation in their game. But once it's already there, taking it out sends a message. It's like exactly. You, yes. you know, we just assume our entertainment pr- products are going to be heteronormative, and then when you go out of your way to to axe that kind of but you know it's a bug but some people saw it as a feature <laughs> so yeah by not including by not including something you are you're not necessarily purposefully being exclusive mm-hmm. i mean you are being exclusive but it might just very well be incidental you know we can't have in 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 terms of development costs at least we can't have games that allow characters particularly in in narrative games and i know that that, that a sims game is hardly narrative based mm. but you can't have in narrative games all of these different options that you can check off so that the main character identifies specifically with you while i do agree that the games industry requires like it, it should have more diversity we should have more uh, female characters we should have more gay characters we should have more uh, multiracial characters. You know, like, it's... it's. I'm, I'm with you, Austin. I'm, I am kind of sick of Whitey. But for... <laughs> yeah, uh, to to have something even accidentally get into a game like that and then going out of your way to remove it is drawing a line in the sand. Do you think, and I... Because I, this is the thing I, I immediately heard in their defense, is that maybe it's culturally... There's some disconnect there. I don't, I don't, I don't have a lot of firsthand experience with this, but I would understand that Japan is a little bit farther behind on the gay marriage bandwagon yeah. than some of the Western world. So maybe that this, this was a thing that they felt they had to do for their uh, fan base, I guess, over there. 
And while that may be the while that may be the case, I don't think it actually stands up as a defense. Hey, you know, I, I'm I am not I'm not one of these people that believes that a culture should be excused from what I consider to be unacceptable behavior because they belong to a different culture and therefore it's okay. You know, I I, I don't believe that that the subjugation of women in uh, uh, theocratic Islamic countries is something that we should excuse because oh well it's just a like it's just a part of the culture like that that kind of behavior to me that that stance is still something that needs to be addressed it needs to be educated it, it needs to be recognized as being despicable it has to be pointed out and said this this is this is wrong and we can't just accept other cultures we can't recognize that every idea is equal if we actually want to have a world that recognizes people as being free, as having independent agency, and, and being able to do whatever they want to do, we have to be able to clear, declare uh, bigotry and homophobia and, and uh, misogyny wherever we see it, even if it is you know, culturally acceptable somewhere else. I, I assume this... Boom! Drops the mic and walks out of the room! <laughs> I, I assume that goes along with your uh, egalitarian approach to slavery that we discussed absolutely, earlier. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Equal opportunity slavery means equal opportunity for owning slaves as well. Does it? Because I feel like once you're enslaved, can you own a slave? Because that this feels like a Ponzi yes, scheme. Yes. No, of course you can. Slaves can own slaves. I mean, eventually these slaves become the like the property of the master. But it's 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 like a pyramid system. It's sort of like okay, I'm his slave, but you're my slave. So you do what I say, and I do what he says, and he tells me something, then I tell you to do it. I feel like the only way that would work is if it loops back around. Like yeah, you're a slave to somebody. And it, yeah, it goes all the way back around at the top. So the first person who enslaved somebody is thus enslaved, and it's just one big slave ring. I think you may have just discovered the easiest way to explain capitalism. <laughs> just, we're just dealing in like really deep metaphors here. We don't even, not even intentionally. So equal opportunity slavery and call out homophobia when you see it. Yeah, I mean it's this. It's not a super big story. I just thought it was interesting because yeah, it, I'd love to see a big. I mean EA as I think the really the highest profile publishers. T- you mean E gay? <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they're they're really the only uh, they're they're really the only company that's come out like super you know pro LGBTQ. I I always have problems saying that. <laughs> Why is that funny? Because the Q, I always miss I always you know miss the funny Q. because every time I hear somebody say LGBT, it they always spell it wrong. I'm probably even spelling it wrong right now. No, it's LGBTQ. Yep, Q Q queer. Look it up. Google it. No, you can't make me. Wait, I'm not your slave. Just put LGBTQ into the into the Google in the Google search on Firefox. It gave me a Logitech Cintiq. I think that may be something that in in Canada it's LGBT. Uh-huh. Austin, I, I think they add the Q in the South of America because they need to be like lesbian, bi, lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queers. Yeah. <laughs> According to Wikipedia. To recognize this inclusion, a popular variant adds the letter Q for those who identify as queer and or are questioning their sexual identity, first recorded uh, in 1996. Uh, oh, okay, so LGBT curious. undecided. Yeah. Yes, I would assume. Okay. But anyway. Which is, which is certainly different than LGBTU, which has some of the best bachelor's degrees in interior design that you can get. I almost stepped on that joke. That was good. <laughs> But anyway, what I was saying was, yeah, EA is taking a stance. They have gay characters in Mass Effect, and they've been, you know, pretty public about sticking up for that. But it would be nice if someone like Nintendo or Sony was just like, yeah, you know, in the next Uncharted, Drake's totally gay. Un- Uncharted Four, just, just that's what, it's, that's just deal, deal with it. <laughs> oh man, wait, 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 wait. What would the subtitle be for that? <laughs> Un- Uncharted Four, Drake's Snake. <laughs> Oh my God, that that's low hanging fruit, but I'll give you that one. It's uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, if if you got a better subtitle, I'll take it. I, can, I, I see. That's the thing is, like, I immediately have like a moral panic where I don't want to say anything offensive. Why? I don't know. It's, this is that's your how I, Don't you edit this before you put it, put it out? You know what, James? Stop bringing logic into this. <laughs> Sorry, this, I, I, this is a PT podcast. This is a realm where no logic exists. Sorry that I'm, I have to be the bur- the burden. <laughs> I, I can't even say it. The unwilling voice of reason. Yeah. 
I try not to say anything terribly offensive because it makes more work for me editing it. <laughs> so I don't remember where I was even going with any of those statements. I just think it would be cool if we got some more gay. I agree. It would, it would be nice to see. It, it would be nice to see somebody other than EA step up to the plate. And I guess you Nintendo know. dropped the ball. And it, I mean, they didn't pick up the ball on purpose. They just found themselves with the ball and they chose to drop it. Yes. Yeah. That's, so that's 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 what happened, guys. We have other stories, or do we want to just keep talking about Drake's snake? I think uh, we got other. I think stories. We have other things to talk about. <laughs> Johnny, do you want to introduce that one before we offend anyone else? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, um, some of you news-savvy folks at home, sitting by the fire, smoking your pipes in your velour bathrobes, may remember that um, a couple of years ago, um, I I believe it was 2011. Yes, I'm, I'm fairly certain it was the summer of 2011. So in the summer of 2011, Sony, the PlayStation Network, got hacked! Um, I remember specifically feeling particularly offended to their reaction to the hacking at, at uh, GDC or E3, where they made a joke about it and everybody laughed, because <laughs> what's funnier than credit card fraud and identity theft? Um, well, uh, unbeknownst to the public at large, the FBI has been doing their darndest to track down the uh, the perpetrators of, of said hack. And in 2011... They interviewed a man by the name of Todd Miller from Columbus in, uh, in Ohio, uh, <clears throat> and uh, over the course, the, the course of the investigation, they basically came to the conclusion that Mr. Miller was involved in some form or another with the hack into the Sony PlayStation Network, and uh, um, Mr. Miller was served a, uh, uh, a warrant or, or an affidavit or a summons, or what have you, um, basically uh, letting him know that he was being, uh, he was being charged um, by aiding and abetting. I'm, I'm not sure what the exact specific charge was, but um, upon receiving this summons, charge, affidavit, ham sandwich, um, Mr. Miller took I, what I'm going to describe as being a novel approach to a proactive defense. You see, when the FBI arrived um, with their search warrant to take his computers and hard drives, Todd Miller had completely wrecked the shit out of his computer and destroyed his hard drives. So this charge that they had laid upon him, which might have been, might have led up to spending 20 years in prison and a fine of up to 250,000 U.S. dollars was downgraded to <clears throat> basically the, he got he got found guilty of obstruction of justice um and um got a year's worth of house arrest all cuz the dude like this shit. smashed up his computer now i'm not saying that i haven't wanted to totally rage on my computer during say like a tribes 2 match or something like that but i mean you got to want that like if if and let's let's be serious here. If this guy was actually legitimately under investigation for aiding, uh, um, uh, like a hacking team or you know possibly hacking well, itself. Yeah, uh, the Miller was a member of a hacking group called the KCUF clan that started in, that starting in 2008 organized an ongoing attack on Sony servers. So the the I guessing the KCUF was pri- were, were prime suspects. The April 2011 hack of Sony. Seems seems to be the case. So you you would assume that he probably would have paid, I imagine, quite a bit of money. Not two hundred and fifty thousand. Yep. No. So no, nope, not at all. Like profit. Right. Deal. I don't know. Uh, uh, did they actually have like tally of what what he had? Uh, I guess that wouldn't be available for public viewing. Yeah. So uh... <clears throat> here's the thing: this uh, unintended side effect of this podcast is I'm learning to become a really good criminal. <laughs> we've yeah, we've the time comes. We've dealt with quite a few stories. There was the, the Activision embezzling thing. That was a great one. And now this, it's like, if someday I pull off like a really good heist, uh, no one's going to be able to catch me. And if they do, I'll just get pregnant and I'll walk. <laughs> uh, I think there's a flaw in your plan, but... <laughs> I see no flaw, James. Don't worry, Austin. We'll keep trying. Uh. <laughs> it's not your fault, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> not you, it's me. 
But does, does that seem like a, a, a loophole to anyone else that you can just destroy the evidence and t- take a much l- leaner sentence? Well, I, you know, oh. I, I think the problem is really that in, there's there's no flexibility in terms of what obstruction of justice means. Like you can't obstruct a little bit of justice or a lot of justice. There's just the one it, justice. It, it's just the one justice that you obstruct. Okay. You know, like like if if it's obstruction of justice because you're protecting somebody who committed perjury. Where someone's like, no, really, you know, is Austin a virgin? <laughs> and you're like, no, you know, like that's that's way different than being like, come on, seriously, did Austin kill that entire village of uh, Serbians? Hey, no proof, no proof. Yeah, you know, why, like, I, why am I always the example? Because you are the everyman, Austin. You're the everyman now. Am I? No, you're, not really. You're I don't know, out. dude. You're the odd man out in this. This podcast, dude. Too. Oh, yeah. It's true. You're the you're the American. Okay. Yeah. So we just got to make so, fun of you. Whatever. So I mean, yeah. If if you're going to obstruct one justice over another justice, it occurs to me that 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 should. I mean, that should probably affect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, at a certain point, you're like, if I'm just going to obstruct the justice, I'm just going to go full out and obstruct all of the justice. It doesn't seem like yeah. there's any additional penalties. So there's you can't half ass it. You just you just go full in. That's it. No thing, justice for you. There's an interesting angle to this uh, this article. Uh, it's not that his 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 computers were totally trashed. His hard drives were not found. So because you know hard drives, they're like super expensive these days. Yeah, I know. I was like, well, just take one for the team, man. Out of that well, still out there somewhere. I mean, the, the lesson remains though. If if you're going to be in trouble. And it's serious trouble. It's it's better for you yeah, to just exactly. hide or destroy the evidence. Yeah. I yeah. So here's the, the th- there's also there's also they're they're pointing out here that that uh, that, that Mr. Miller's um, highest amount of education was ninth grade. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so you you just know you just know that those hard drives had lots of precious pornography on it. Yeah. Oh jeez. And, and you just you just don't throw that away. Because where in this day and age, <laughs> just like are you are you gonna find any porn? It's a, it's a precious commodity. Yeah, it is. It's 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 like uh, it it is the oil in this of the, the oil warrior internet. age of the internet. Yeah. Oil of the internet. Eventually, it'll be all gone. Yeah. Then where will don't we be? U- don't use up all the porn, people. Yeah. It also leads to global warming. Like like oil, like real oil. Is that like limited editions of digital games? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It also says in this article that uh, after, um, okay, Miller told the judge that he was immature and ignorant and caught up with the wrong people at the wrong time when he destroyed his hardware. But he's learned his lesson and and, that, and he assures the judge that he will not see, uh, we will not see him again. See, that just sounds to me like he's learned to hide his shit better. Yeah, this this whole this whole like backstory about Miller is starting to look like broken home kind of story, and that he finds salvation in full in the, the he mends the error of his ways, finds a full time job, yada yada yada. So is this the the eight mile story of um, internet hacking? Is that what we're getting at? Uh, I'm not entirely knowledgeable about the eight, the eight mile story or me neither i've head. actually never seen eight mile is it the green mile story of internet <laughs> that's a, i haven't like, seen i haven't pretty, seen the green mile either I'm pretty I'm sorry. Sorry. and does it turn over a new leaf i'm pretty sure he just becomes another white trash rapper again wait, okay is this the furious four no no wait wait, 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 wait. fast five Fast Five. Is this the Fast Five? I don't know. I haven't seen of internet hacking stories. You've never seen the Green Mile, Johnny? Is this the Albert Knobs <laughs> You're a of knob. internet? Ha- <laughs> <laughs> You're... Yep. No, I haven't You're... seen the Green Mile. Oh, you got to see the Green, Green Mile. Mile. It's so good. It's gonna. Be... It was. It passed me by, and then it just. I never got around. It's probably on Netflix or something like that. I'll. I'll, I'll Netflix it up. It's really good. I believe you. But the real question here is this. The Toxic Avenger of internet hacking stories. I hate you, Johnny. <laughs> it, is this the My Boyfriend's Back of internet hacking stories? What are you even talking about? Is this my boy- the Fred's Dead of internet stories? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to hate fuck you in the heart, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, title. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you in the heart. I can't be that as a title. 
Seriously though, guys, do we? I mean, here's the thing about the whole PSN hack: is it it kind of made a lot of people wary of you know the future of digital distribution and all of these you know Xbox Live and you know the eShop and all that stuff. And now with the PS4 coming out, I mean, not seeing all those people to go to jail for a very long time kind of sends a message that you can kind of get away with this stuff. Are we concerned about security going into the next generation of consoles? I, I don't think it's so much security that I'm concerned about as I am concerned about the actual, like, l- legal system. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's just about the legal system. system. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because I'm, I'm, like, I'm really sorry, but, you know, we, we've managed to, to get ourselves into a situation where all laws in this land are mandated by a bunch of old white guys in, you know, for America, it would be, you know, uh, the Senate, the, the, um, the, 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 I don't know, the Congress. <laughs> the House of Representatives. The, Actually, the Supreme Court. Pretty sure that it's starting to become a little bit more multicultural now, so it's just going to be old people. Okay, I'm sorry, old people. Yeah. And we all know how well old people use the internet. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I'm I'm not like I'm not going after like all old, old people because my mom's got a tablet. You know, she's she's pretty savvy for the most part. You know, she knows how to use Netflix and iTunes and and all the things that like normally, you know, in order to to get your content digitally, she's got an e-reader. She's she's all up on this shit, you know. But but to like ask these people, I mean, we the fucking there was a senator a few years ago that described the internet as a, a like a bunch of tubes, a series of tubes. Here's series the thing: of tubes. Series of tubes. You wouldn't trust your mother to write legislation on the internet, is what we're trying to get at. Fuck no! <laughs> but again, people... if, when our turn comes, if we ever procreate, we're going to be in the exact same situation. Uh, but this is uh, and and part of the problem is not only this. Excuse me. Part of the problem is 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 not only just the fact that they're old, but also their backgrounds. You know, like most of the people who get into politics are businessmen and lawyers. We see so little representation from people who who maintain other vocations during the course of their life. We see very little scientists. We see, like, probably no people who are actually into technology, like, no people that are, are engineers or no people that are, like, uh, programmers or anything of the sort. Not a lot of strippers either. No, not a lot of strippers. I mean, that, that much is true. But, you know, I'm trying to say is that there's a real lack of a variety of, of viewpoints when it comes to the creation of laws. Yeah. And it would, it would be really nice to have that diversity and not just like a cultural diversity because everybody's off their ass right now about cultural diversity we want black people we want spanish people we want jewish people we want fucking mexican people we want we want everybody but it's but there's no there's no call to diversity for people who actually have different qualifications yeah it's all about ethnicity it's or we want it to be about knowledge. I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it very plainly. I've met a lot of stupid white people. Oh. I've met a bunch of stupid Indians. I've met a bunch of stupid black people. I've I've met a bunch of stupid Native Americans. Stupidity is not like it's not ethnicity based. Everybody's got it. It's everywhere. What we need is we need intelligent people. We need people who know what they're doing. And if government doesn't have the intelligence to properly regulate and legislate, they need to outsource to experts. They need to outsource to people who know what's going on. They need to be aware of what their constituents wants, their cons- want, their concerns for security, and they need to talk to people who actually fucking have a clue as to what that's about and what that means. Yeah, but they do and not do that. That'll never happen. <laughs> well, never. I think we give a couple of generations where people who've grown up with the internet and maybe it'll, are a little bit more tech savvy. It'll happen eventually, but it's not going to happen within our lifetime. I don't. It will never happen as fast as it has to happen. Yeah, yeah. the technology will outgrow them. That's that's a thing. That's you know with the the SOPA and the PIPA and there's that new one. I don't even remember anymore. I can't keep track. CISPA, CISPA, I think it was. Yeah. Well, did you guys did you guys hear about the 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 3D printer gun? Yeah. What? Yeah. A, a oh, defense yeah, company. that's right. Yeah, they made a, a gun out of three with 3D printer. Yeah, a defense company for the listeners, for the benefit of the listeners, a defense company, quote unquote, in the United States, released a blueprint for a gun that you can make with a 3D printer. Now, granted. One of the setbacks of having to like 3D print a gun is that you have to spend like somewhere around ten thousand dollars to get yourself a 3D printer. 
but that basically means that that anybody anybody can download the specs for a gun and i think all you need is like a nail from like home hardware or something like that um which might be a canadian thing i don't know do you have home hardware in the states austin i believe it's home depot okay all do you right. not have home depot yeah we have, we have home depot up here Okay. But home hardware is like they I don't know, they partner with like Hockey Night in Canada and shit like that. So Yeah. It's just it's where I hear home and I go hardware. Um so yeah, you just go to like Home Depot and get yourself a nail and then it plugs into this three D printed gun and ta da I I think it's only like a twenty two caliber gun and it's not particularly accurate, you know, but it's I mean still it's, more gun than you had still, previously. I'm pretty sure it's still a lethal <laughs> implement. Oh. Well, now this is, but this is an interesting point: is that previous to the availability of having a 3D printed gun, if you really wanted to fucking hurt somebody, you could very easily. You know, it's 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 easy to do things like l- look up pipe bomb recipes. Okay, Austin, you might know this. How much does it take to get a gun down there? Probably not more, not ten thousand dollars. I bet they're just laying around. They're on the sidewalks. They're in exactly. the trees. <laughs> you can't go. I just tripping over them. So uh, if you really want to hurt someone, you can do it. Hell, you can pick up a stick and hit somebody in the face a couple of times, and, and that will do the job, you know. So, but this, so this 3D gun doesn't really change anything, um, apart from perhaps just, like, the materials. Because I know that one of the problems that they had with it was is that there's a regulation in the United States that any firearm has to have enough metal in it so that when it passes through a metal detector, it goes oh. off. and. And in the blueprints of this 3D printed gun, they say, and here's where you put the metal plate. But people printing these up around the country, of course, can choose on their own whether or not they decide to include that metal plate. Uh, and that, of course, might be a, a problem with legality. But, but the point is, is that this blueprint was released and downloaded to a bunch of different servers in other countries – and by the time the American government was like, whoa, wait a minute, that's a bad idea, and demanded that this company take down the blueprint, Already it's, on, it's on the internet, and, and you can get it right now. I mean, sure, with your crazy, weird, like, Patriot Act shit, if, if you download a 3D printer gun. Would you be able to 3D print ammo? No. No, you need to buy the ammo. Oh, okay. You need to buy the ammo. Um, ammo is pretty cheap, though. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, like, that's that's a perfect example right there of technology outstripping uh, a, a legislature's ability to cope with the potential threat. And that was your weekly gun update. Fuck. <laughs> well, I mean, it, 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 I recognize that this is, like, pulling the example way off to the extreme. Yeah. No, way I, off to the I, re- I recognize how we got here. I, <laughs> I, I was just reflecting on it. Yeah. So, like, trusting these people to be able to – I mean, I uh, – last – was it last year or the year before? It, it might have been the year before. Uh, it it might have been 2011. I had a, like, a, a big problem with, with the services that I use online. I still don't know how it happened, but I wound up losing access to a bunch of online things. My email, my Facebook. I remember uh, that, yeah. My, my, I like to call it the Svetlana incident. The Svetlana incident. The, re- the reason why the reason why my uh, my co-hosts here are laughing is that um, whoever managed to get a hold of these things also got a hold of my Skype, uh, and they went by the name Svetlana. And Svetlana's favorite thing to do was to Skype call anybody on my contacts list and play obnoxiously loud Russian dance music at them. <laughs> Oh, the memories. At at all hours of the day. <laughs> oh, the memories. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, I, I will tell you that I, I did go to law enforcement for this because I was concerned that, you know, identity theft might have been a problem for me. That that maybe – I because, I, you know, there's a lot of stuff out on the internet, and there's there's no telling who has access to, to what if they get their hands into your into your info. So I yeah I contacted the police and I I managed to get back a lot a lot of my stuff I think to this day the only things that I permanently lost were my uh, games for Windows Live slash Xbox Live uh, gamer tag <laughs> um, yeah <laughs> no kidding I I lost I lost my old email address 
and I lost my old Twitter account. And I, I still I still haven't gotten these back, but everything else I managed to get back under my control. Um, and after contacting the police, the the Canadian ro- the Royal Canadian Mounted Police wound up getting in contact with I shit you not Homeland Security and the Secret Service because my email got <laughs> broken into. <laughs> I didn't know this part. <laughs> I'm I am Bounties. dead I'm dead serious. They got in contact with the Secret Service and apparently at at this particular time of the year in 2011, my email service that I was using at the time, which was Hotmail, suffered an unusually high spike of hacked accounts and the Secret Service were looking into it. And while my account hacking met up with all these criteria that the Secret Service had like set up as being like, yeah, these this is our prime target right here. This is the zone in which these things happen. They were, how you say, a little reticent to share details with a Vancouver Royal Canadian Mounted Police officer. Uh, but but yeah, that was a thing. So there's like there's a, a Secret Service case out there of I don't know cyber terrorism or whatever you want to call it that's that's got like my information in it. <laughs> I hope someday like it just turns into a huge thing and it becomes like a landmark case the the Johnny versus Svetlana landmark you decision. Just, you just want an opportunity to blare like I don't know heavy metal or like new metal dance music at Svetlana as loud as you possibly can. <laughs> that would be the best. I don't even. What was the, what was the end game for the Russian dance music thing? <laughs> like, what is what is? I I don't follow the logic. It it basically at that point in time it had devolved to just harassment. <laughs> it was just trolling, Russian trolling. It, it, it really was. It was really just as like you know being as annoying as as possible in in as obnoxious a way as possible. So I mean to bring it back to video games. If I'm allowed, I don't. I know you guys really. No, I games. gotta, I gotta, I gotta interject here. <laughs> Fuck. Leafs just lost to the Bruins five four in overtime. Oh, poor Toronto. Oh I my hate, god. I hate both those teams. I couldn't give a shit. There's gonna be so many mad coworkers at my work tomorrow. All right, continue. Oh, so if we don't trust, here's 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 taking it all the way back to the beginning. If we don't trust these our our government or you know whoever is in charge to adequately police this stuff are we are we not worried about giving our information to sony microsoft the problem is the problem is that we are then by like de facto we are forced to trust the companies who who get our information we're forced to trust microsoft we're forced to trust sony we're forced to trust valve electronic arts all these people who have access to our mailing addresses and billing information and things like that we are forced to trust them and that's why I put as little as possible when I'm dealing with it. Okay, well, let's say that's an inevitability. We can't trust the government. We have to give these people our information. Do you see that slowing the rate of adoption for digital only? For some Completely. people, yeah, ab- absolutely. Because Honestly, I don't know. I see the I see the bigger the bigger um, bigger problem with digital only is the fact that not not everybody has like uh, 50 down internet yet. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, James, I'm sure you saw earlier, but the new Phoenix Wright is going to be download only. Yes, which, sir. Which is unfortunate because I imagine a large percentage of the 3DS user base may not have access to a you know stable internet thing, which, which sucks because that series deserves to get some sales. And if it's not in the GameStop, you know. Yeah, it is a shame. But honestly, if I had to choose between, if if I I honestly haven't read the um, the statement that Capcom put out for uh, why we did digital only. But if it's because if you if you want it, it's going to be digital only because it's going to be too, it's going to be too expensive to port over to the states. I'm fine with it. Yeah, it was. Um, so, I can't pronounce the man's name. He's the the vice president of Capcom USA, Svezin or something. S V E S S O N. Um, he basically said that it was either that or nothing. If you read between the lines, like because it doesn't sell well enough to justify localization and yeah, uh, ma- manufacturing. Never so. has really. It's 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 a fan favorite, but it's never sold well. Yeah. Well, sold it's got it's, it's got a cult. It's got a cult. I believe. Of yeah, devo- cult of yeah. devoted fans, but it's, yeah, it's never been mainstream. I feel so bad for that guy. The guy's name I can't pronounce. Svesson. Probably yeah. He is like the guy that Cap- Capcom sends out to to face the firing squad anytime they do anything, 
anytime a Mega Man gets canceled or something like that, he, he's the guy who's like, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I just like picture him with like hat in the hand. He's like, I, I, I still love you. <laughs> it's it's got to be a thankless job, man, because he's the face. And so any of the abuse, I imagine, comes across his, de- his desk first. Poor guy. Yeah. Speaking of video games. Oh, fuck. We've got to keep doing video game stuff. I know. Do we, do we still do the what we played last week? That's what I'm segueing to right now, James. You're on the ball, and that means you get to go first. Congratulations! Well, Johnny, what have I been playing this past week? I've been playing a lot of Dungeons and Dragons Neverwinter. Well, that's Holy a thing, isn't it? Holy crap! That game is something else. Is that is that a good something else or a bad something else? Well, I'm not. I'm. You two probably haven't played the old uh, Dungeons and Dragons online. No, no, I, I, I did play, they had like a free trial period a while back, and I, I had a look at it, and I was like, <laughs> no, 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 seriously. Well, no. It, it, EDO was a, a good game, yet underrated, because people didn't want to uh, have to deal with it. It was very yeah. <laughs> that that's the sign of a good game. <laughs> Not, yeah. Well, yeah, when people when people don't want to deal with it, that means that you've done something have, right. Like in a in a wor- in a world where Warcraft is king. In a, yeah, ba- it's basically that. In a world where World of Warcraft is the best and the uh, the template, DDO was a little bit too complex for people to understand or cope with. So they decided right. to not play it. So Neverwinter takes the DDO format and basically turns it more along the lines of World of Warcraft. Or actually, I, just want to, I just want to be clear that the only reason why I didn't like DDO was because it wasn't enough DD, and it was way too much O. Uh, you know, it kind of... You're right. <laughs> well, I mean, isn't, isn't the appeal of Dungeons & Dragons being able to like have your own adventure stuff? So putting it on sure, rails yeah. well, kind of seems like it defeats the purpose. Uh, well, uh, actually... Now that I think about it, the dungeons of DDO were just about as rail, uh, about as on rails as you would find in a regular Dungeons and Dragons game. Well, I mean, if you're if you're if you want to look for secret stuff, it's there. You just have me, to put the time in to look for it. Excuse my tabletop uh, ignorance, perhaps, but can't you just make your own dungeons? Yes, and that's what uh, DDO, That's what Neverwinter actually has. Oh, okay. Then go on. Then that's it's got, a le- it's got a level editor called the Foundry and. People can submit their uh, their DM like quest to the Foundry for review. Uh, with I'm not sure what the panel is. I'm not sure if it's devs or important people. Like I I don't know. But yeah, you can. There is a there's an active part of DDO called the Foundry, and you can have user made quests. And which let's be clear could either work for or against it. Well, most of the most of the Foundry quests that I've played are actually fun. And, well, I mean, I'm excuse me. I suppose it it does work pretty deeply in their favor that they do have a review board that goes over them. Yes, that's true. And hell, they even they even um, uh, they also do um, multi language too. Good for them. Uh, well, that is that's if you if you want to spend the time to translate it. If the if the user wants to t- spend time translating it. Aside from the foundry, uh, DDO is is much like actually I've I've drawn a lot of comparisons to. Guild Wars 2, and I'm I'm totally fine with it. Actually, I've been playing it a lot over the past week. I'm almost level cap, and I'll probably get it done soon. Uh, and and I've also been playing a game that uh, Austin or actually Sean sent me. I'm I'm curious before we before we move on here. I just want to make one thing clear. You did mention that it makes Neverwinter makes the Dungeons and Dragons formula a lot more like like World of Warcraft. So we can assume that like that Dungeons and Dragons stat freaks um, are f- probably going to want to shy away from it. Okay, when you say Dungeons and Dragons stat freaks, give me an example. I just I mean, you know, people that that like remember There's a t- like well there is what a, a what a Thacko is. I don't even know what that is. That's right, bitches. I remember <laughs> Thacko. I'm legit, the, yo. I've heard the term, but I, I've never actually figured. Out, I've never actually looked up what that meant. To hit armor class zero. Okay. All right. No, that, that's that's the way it's Thaco is is a uh, an um an acronym for to hit armor class zero, okay. and it, it basically is like you know you you roll the dice and it's like okay your Thaco is boo. So in order to hit something with an armor class of zero, you need to roll your Thaco. Okay. 
Okay. Well, wait, zero zero doesn't start with an O. It starts with a Z. Shouldn't it be Thaxes? No, because they use the digit. They use the digit, it was, yeah. It was the first. It was the first example of leet speak that the world had ever seen. Yep. You know what, Johnny? That was a good. There's joke. no save. That, that, that was a good joke. That was a good joke. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Getting back to no it. Save. Okay. Zax. Like Thaxes. <laughs> Thaxes. <laughs> in D D in Neverwinter, there is the six stats: strength, charisma, dexterity, endurance, wisdom, intelligence. I can't even count. Uh, and there's also uh, you get points every ten levels to put into two of your two of your choice. You get one each in, at level thirty and sixty. And then you get stuff like armor class, armor pen, flexion, defense, power, crit, recovery, stuff like that. Have you have you played much of of the latest edition of Dungeons and Dragons? Is it based on? No, three? I haven't played Dungeons and four? Dragons ever. Four and a half, five Dungeons and Dragons, twelve. I have never played Dungeons and Dragons 18. This time it's personal. Dungeons and Dragons starring Jeremy Irons. I think Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> You're confusing him. No, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting until he runs out of numbers. I'm just. I'm just curious as to how accurate it is to uh, to Dungeons and Dragons. I honestly haven't systems. played Dungeons and Dragons. All right, then. Deck. fine. So then let's let's move on. Okay. We'll move on. What else have you been playing? Uh, like Sean, sent, Sean sent me a copy, uh, a preview copy of, or it is now, I guess, a review copy of Sanctum 2 that comes out on Wednesday. I've been playing that a lot, and I'll have the review up on Wednesday as well. Stay tuned to Blistered Thumbs for that. Sanctum 2. And more. Sanctum 2 is basically, uh, if you haven't played the original Sanctum... It's Wait, a, is there an embargo on this? You're going to get us in trouble. Well, I'm just explaining Sanctum 1. Okay, I'm just making sure. It's my job. This is literally my only job. <laughs> make sure you idiots don't do shit like that. <laughs> uh, there are previews everywhere for the game, like a okay. few months ago. Uh, Sanctum is a first-person tower defense game. You build the the grid for uh, enemies to walk across, place towers, place walls, and then when you're done placing towers and walls, then you go fight them with your guns. It's actually pretty good. I actually got to play multiplayer right before we got onto this podcast for the first time, and it's I, it actually holds up very well, which I was kind of surprised with because I wasn't really expecting nearly zero lag in an ind- independent developed game. All right then. Did you did is the multiplayer like one person is the towers and one person is not the towers? Uh, or there are four characters in the game now. In the original, there was two. Now there are four, and you can have four player multiplayer. Like cooperative or competitive? Cooperative. Oh, okay. I wanted to shoot your towers, is what I'm trying to say. Why do you have to be so combative? Today? I I just want to shoot everyone's towers. That's just my life. I don't... Speaking of what you've been shooting, Austin. What have you been shooting this week? Oh, I'm, st- I'm still grinding through Disgaea 2, which is... That's just going to be a thing. I'm, I'll probably just stop mentioning I, it at a certain so, point. So, yeah, you should probably just stay quiet about this for the next, I don't know, two months. <laughs> a couple months, yeah. Those games are just... It's I, tried, deep. I tried to play this guy one, but I just got lost. I'm like, how am <laughs> I, just I, just lost how am I supposed to grind like a thousand levels? You don't have to. You can beat the story at a normal like same well, yeah, level. I did. I did. Oh, okay. And I just said it was like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's there's always tricks to it. I remember in the first game, it's like if there was a one level where all of the spaces but one were invincibility squares. Uh, that so was a trick. Yeah, so if you threw all the enemies into each other and then put them on the non-invincibility score, you could beat them up for free experience. But, yeah, I, I would never get to the level cap in my wildest dreams. I just want to see this the story, and then I'll move on. So there's that. Also, do you guys remember, Johnny, I'm sure you do, maybe for the benefit of our listeners, do you remember that uh, visual novel kick I went off on a while ago? Um, the visual novel kick, yeah. Um, what was it, 999 yeah. um, you talked about? And um, there was a spiritual sequel as well. Virtue's Last Reward, which actually yeah, yeah. Which ended up being an, uh, a direct sequel. It, didn't, it, it sells itself as not, but it turns into one eventually. Um, yeah, so as, as listeners might remember, I'm, I really like visual novels. The unfortunate thing is we don't get a lot of them in English. There's Ace Attorney. There's Zero Escape. We just started getting Corpse Party. And then I want to say is Professor Layton is like puzzle with visual novel elements, but that's pretty much it in English. Is there anything else? Uh, Hotel Dusk, I guess. Can you, yeah, uh, that was that was a visual novel. That's really the only non-pornographic visual novels we get in, yep. in my language, which is unfortunate for someone who's a fan of the genre and not really interested in erotic stuff. I mean, I have no problem with people who do. It's just not what I was into. So 
playing this guy out. Right, 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 right. You You're go- not into erotic stuff. Because I remember you talking about Katawa Shujo. Which was, as you remember, me pretty much embarrassed that it was way better than I thought it was going to be. So, yep. that was- <laughs> so tell us about the erotic um, <laughs> porn you've been playing now. Well, I haven't been playing erotic porn. Here's what- <laughs> I-, I love you, Johnny. I just love you so much. Here's what was happening. I was, I was like, okay, I need something to talk about on the podcast, uh, but I'm playing Disgaea, so it's going to have to be short. I was looking through Steam. I ran across the game. I'd heard of it before, but it's like the only visual novel on Steam. It's called Analog, A Hate Story. Have you guys heard of this? Yes, I have not. So I didn't play it. I was looking into it to see if it's something I might enjoy. And I, uh, the woman who wrote it, uh, her name is Christine Love, I believe. She is a gay Canadian writer. She has a couple other games she made first, which were free. So I downloaded all of them. <laughs> And so that's what I did. I played the – fir- uh, the first one is called Digital, A Love Story, and the second one has a really fucking long name. I'm, it's called – I'm just look up the whole name here. It's called Don't Take It Personally, Babe. It's Just Not Your Story. That's the entire name. I'm just going to call it Don't – Colon, This Time It's Personal. This Time It's Personal. <laughs> Your vengeance. Your vengeance. No, no, no. It should be Don't Don't Take It Personal. It's Not Your Story 2, colon, This Time It's Personal. <laughs> colon, Revenge. Revenge. There we go. <laughs> Vengeance so has been had. <laughs> so those are the two games I played, and I'm going to play Analog because the two games I played were very, very good. She's a very talented writer. Um, I'll, uh, first, I just want to talk about digital because the, if, if you remember, what I love so much about the Zero Escape series is that they use, despite being essentially only text, they are more video game than most video games because, like I was explaining, that they used the concept of multiple endings as a gameplay mechanic, which is, you know super cool novel to me uh digital when you boot it up it is a pc interface it is um like an apple II desktop like that that is what the game looks like and you you essentially navigate the internet and message boards and you know know, bbs to get through the game i don't have any particular nostalgia i mean i wasn't born in the 80s so I, i actually have no experience with this era of internet that it's set in but I, I mean, through just, you know, cultural osmosis and research, I'm aware of everything that's kind of going on. And it's super cool and unique. Uh, it's, it's hard to talk about with giving too much away, but you go on to the Internet in like early Internet days and everything's like really gaudy and poorly designed. And you're just like, talking with people and something happens and like you get caught up in like, some things that are happening online. Um, I'm trying to think of how to how to really. Is it a game of Trade Wars 2002? Because there was a lot of drama in Trade Wars 2002. I have literally no idea what you're talking about. I oh. hope somebody does. Leave a comment if you remember Trade Wars 2002. <laughs> it here's the thing. It, there's only one ending. There's only one path. It, it is more like Phoenix Wright in the sense it's like, what do I do now to make the story continue? It's it's not like there's no like branching decision points as in a lot of visual novels. It's just like I need to go to this forum and find this person who has the password so I can get into this bulletin board so I can download this file so I can you know send this person a message and it's like it, it eventually becomes. I mean it's it's. Do you go to an FTP site? <laughs> they do mention. Here's another thing. It's kind of like a love letter to technology. They actually mention. I think the creation of FTPs is a plot point. Wow. It's, it is. It's like if you don't have a pretty good basis in the, in technology and in internet in general, you're not going to be able to progress. Do they like you reference have, ARPANET? Yeah, oh my God. That's shh, spoilers. ARPANET. Seriously. <laughs> no, no way. It's, it's a super big thing. No, I can't. I can't. <laughs> That's great. It's really Love good. A ten out of ten best game ever. <laughs> game of the year. Game of the year. It's really it's it's super cool if you get all like the inside jokes and you know just there's probably things that even flew over my head. Like I said, I I, I was not alive in the eighties, so I probably missed things. But everything I got was super cool. And, and the the title of the game is Digital, a love story, and there is a love story. But I also think the title is kind of dual meanings. It's kind of like a love letter to the internet in addition to the actual events of the plot. And it's 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 like nothing I've ever played, and I I'd highly recommend it. Um, it's also free. I'll probably I'll leave a link under the the cast. You can just download it. A- a- in addition to the next game I'm going to talk about, which is Don't Take It Personally, which is a more traditional visual novel in the sense that it's it's text and pictures, and it goes in a linear direction. There are branching story points. Everything's like anime style. This is what you generally think of as a visual novel, and it's not as novel or as clever as digital and it's, the writing I would say is a little weaker, but I loved it more because 
Christine is a super funny writer. Like this game, I've never, I haven't laughed as much playing a game as in the, maybe since like Psychonauts as I did playing this game. It's fun. That is that is quite a uh, an accolade. It's yeah, funny. That as is fuck. pretty good. And here's another thing. It kind of t- dovetails what we were talking about with earlier um, gayness. As I mentioned before, Christine is a gay writer, and all of her characters, like, I'm trying to think, of, of the entire cast of Don't Take It Personally, there are, like, two or three straight people, and they are easily, like, the worst people. Like, there's, like, 20 gay people, and they're all awesome. It's like, it's, I, I like it a lot. Here, let me, let me back up, set the scene. You are a teacher, and you go into the school, and you, it, it's in the near future. I think it's 2027. And kind of the premise of the game is that at this private school that you teach, you have access to everyone's social networks for, like, I guess, ostensibly anti-bullying purposes. But really what it is is so you have the surface narrative of interacting with these people and then the subtext and the, the, the kind of the you seeing what they say behind your back and behind each other's backs and how that relates to the overall themes of relationships and love in, in a kind of modern society. Because you have your private life and you have your public like persona and then you have like your online identity and how these things interrelate. And it's just something that I haven't really seen a lot of. And I I find it really interesting and it's very well written in a lot of senses. It's like I said, I think it's not as clever. It's just mostly just like people just being funny and cool and awesome and stuff, but it's, it's more relatable than digital, which is just essentially, you know, text and, a terminal. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. really terrible, like um, early internet graphics. It's it's like purposefully awful looking. Um, I'm trying to think. There's so many things I want to talk about. This I don't want to take all day. Um, where where to even start? I think I th- probably I should just warn people if you're gonna play it, which you should. It's free. I'll leave a link. There's the one part that I think people might remember. I remember after I played it, I looked up some reviews. It was like it was you know as an indie visual novel. I only got a couple. The one I found was Rock Paper Shotgun. And they talked some in depth about one plot point, which is that you as a teacher can enter a romantic but non-sexual relationship with one of your students, which is, uh, need, needless to say, pretty problematic. Um, when I played, I ran the other direction and salted the earth behind me to get as far <laughs> away from that person as possible. Not only because of the moral problem, but because playing as many video games as I have has taught me that is a one-way ticket to the bad ending. <laughs> you never take that bait. But it's so delicious. <laughs> but I, after beating it, I actually played through the game like six or seven times to see all the different th- th- the way that things can play out by your choices. And it actually doesn't. I mean, I don't want to give it away, but it it doesn't. Uh, like you, it, you'll still go. Like the game won't come to a stop. We won't go to jail and get you know raped to death for being a terrible pedophile. Like it, the game accepts that as a thing you could do, and it doesn't pass like judgment on you like the character feels bad he's like oh shit oh my god i'm gonna go to jail i'm gonna lose my job i'm a monster like he's he thinks these things but the game never like stops you and is like seriously you fucking pervert like it's weird the way they handle it or the way she handles it. it's obviously made by one person so if, you, if you're uncomfortable with that i would say that it's a thing you should be aware of i don't know if i it's there's an argument between characters doing immoral things and games or you know products being immoral there's a distinction there yeah so that's that's like and is this is this the game that you were talking about um on your twitter feed that that gave you a tearing up moment well yes it's like the, that's <clears throat> funny is that that controversial part of it is like such a tiny little thing compared to the rest of the game like there's there's a, a whole sequence like a whole chapter it's actually divided into chapters about these two characters and you can you can essentially like help them get together or not and the the resolution to that storyline was just so cute and I was just like, aw, like I actually awed out loud, and I like never do that. It was just, it was just really well done. The, the, I mean, all the characters that you're supposed to like, you really like, and all the characters you're supposed to hate, you really hate. Like they're written very, you know, well. You, they, have, they evoke the proper response. So, I mean, I, I'm gonna play Analog, the next game she made, and I hope it's as, as good as that. I, I assume it's better because she's charging money for it, where she doesn't charge money for these other ones. But it's, it's if you're, if you're looking for non-pornographic visual novels. I just found some for you. So I want to say more, though. Gosh, there's, there's this really cute gay couple. They have the best dialogue. There's one where he, he posts on his social network. He's like, I'm totally in love with a dude. No homo. And I cracked up. There's another one. He's like, can you stop being so faggy? And he's like, nope. Like, I, they, just have like the best, they just have like the best banter. 
it's amazing. But yeah, all, all of the all of the straight characters are like on a scale of irredeemable, where all the gay characters are like amazing, which I I didn't bother me at all. I thought it was I thought it was great. I love seeing more gay characters in video games. I just I I wish she would write other video games. We need more of that. Someone should hire her to like make triple A characters, like an RPG with like her writing would be super cool. Yeah. Now I'm thinking about that. It's good stuff, guys. <laughs> In my mind. Yeah. Here's here's one thing. I want I want to say that the games played together are an interesting experience because they both are ostensibly about having relationships in like kind of a connected future, but they also kind of go together in a certain way. There's um one of the things you kind of have to accept about don't take it personally is that in this in the future with a generation that grew up never knowing a world without the internet, never you know have not having Facebook, right? That they they would that they would become part of their identity. Like the people in the game say lol, they don't laugh, they say lol like a word. Oh well, people have already started exactly. Doing that. So that's what I'm saying. Which like, by the way, YOLO. Don't don't do it. Don't you dare. <laughs> But I'm saying that could easily become annoying or something like that. Or, you know, there's there's certain elements of it that you're like, oh, that wouldn't happen. Right. Like the the, the school school wouldn't give the teacher unlimited access to everyone's social networks or whatever. But in digital, there's a conversation on a, um, a William Gibson message board. I, I assume you've read Neuromancer, guys. Hell yes. They're talking about Neuromancer. And the one character says. Or it's the one, you know, poster on the forum says, oh, it's so unrealistic. You know, technology is never going to be like this. And the other character says, it, science fiction isn't, a, isn't about predicting the future. It's not a crystal ball. It's about using technology to explore human experience, which is like should be the tagline of don't take it personally. Like they, they, they justify each other in, in a lot of ways. And I think it's you should play them probably back to back because of the way they handle all these things. It's it, they're not realistic, you know, but they're enjoyable and they're, they have stuff to say. Even if you don't, you you can be unrealistic and still investigate realistic themes, though. Yeah, as long as it rings emotionally true, I find that's the most important thing for a narrative-driven game. Obviously, there's like no gameplay, but it, the important thing is that you 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 get the the right feelings, the right ideas out of it. So yeah, yeah. So that's that game. I I don't think I could be any more pleased with the way that turned out. I think all characters in video games should be gay from now on. Just all of them. I'll get working on it. <laughs> James is like, what about the dragons in Monster Hunter? <laughs> yeah. Big gay dragons. Dude, big gay dragons. That should be the name of the, that should be the, name of the podcast. Next title. I assume that this is the part where we talk about what Johnny played, but I'm sure it's some stupid, boring, straight crap. Before we go to that, I have an addendum for my list what I played this week because I forgot one very giant important game that I did not mention. Okay. That is Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. 80s tastic? Oh, God. Feelings. <laughs> Feelings that game invokes. Uh, I could play that game. I, I could replay that game forever. I, Actually, have you heard that they're thinking about just making it its own series? That might be a little too much. <laughs> like, could it sustain a full retail title? Don't think that much campiness in that uh, in that genre. I don't think it could sustain a franchise. That game is is beautiful, but a franchise might be pushing it. Also, your your character when you when you start firing off the the chain gun for like three seconds starts screaming like Red Brown. It's the best thing ever. I just, they, they clearly I don't did know. research. They did. They did. And I, I I just I'm at a loss for words of how great this game is. But are the Blood Dragons? the question that you're all thinking right now. <laughs> big gay blood dragons. Gay, big gay blood dragons. <laughs> Title! I would I would play that game. Big gay blood dragons. Oh my god. Okay, Johnny, I'm done. Thank you. Alright, alright. Uh, well, first of all, first and foremost this week, I played Patch the Sim City. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that's all so, the rage. You still play that game? No, well, okay, here, here's the thing, here's the thing. First of all, I, I feel a need to defend myself to the listeners because <clears throat> I've been very vocal about my lack of support for, for SimCity and for always online digital rights management, and, like, I, I want to make it clear that I, like, I still haven't bought any of the StarCraft II games, I still haven't bought Diablo III. The only reason why I have a copy of SimCity is because a review copy had been, had been passed to me. And Didn't I review that? It, oh, that's that doesn't mean right because you didn't have a computer time. It, it showed up Precisely. as like at the day your review was already up. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, so a review copy of SimCity was passed to me, and viewing the problems that they were having around the launch of the game, I was like, uh, that's not really something I want to fight with. Because I, I know it sounds kind of weird for a guy who is primarily a PC gamer to say that when he wants to sit down and play a game, he doesn't want to fight to play that game. Because I, I know that people have this sort of like weird skewed idea of PC gaming that it's like every time you want to sit down and play a game, you have to update your drivers and then like set your sound card to IRQ7 and then CD backslash, edit your config.sys and then... Whoa, 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 whoa. Get out of the 80s, man. Pour a beer into your tower and get it get it nice and loaded before you like you know gently ask it if maybe it wants to go in the back room and play a little bit of Blood Dragon. Maybe get some flowers. Yeah. Get a movie. Yeah. Take it out to dinner. Tell it it looks really pretty. You know, buy it a dress. It looks fat in the tower. Meet its mother. Yeah. It. It. Um. I mean, it's it's not really like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I didn't really want to fight with SimCity. I, I didn't want to fight with the always online connectivity. I was still curious about the game. Uh, so, uh, this weekend, I was like, you know what, I, I think I'm, I'm finally ready to give it a try. Because there have been some news about, you know, SimCity patching and trying to get, like, Cheetah Speed back up. So I was like, okay, all right, maybe it's in a working condition at this point in time. Let's, let's go for it. So, um, I, I played Patch SimCity for... Probably the greater part of about two to three hours, actually. Um, because Wonder of Wonders, the way that, that Electronic Arts has managed to set up Origin's update system is just like... By logic? Yeah, that would be the straight man way of saying it. Okay, um, how would the gay man say it? No, no, I mean straight man in like the classic vaudeville sense, ah. where you got a straight man and then, you know, like uh, a, a slightly more wry and off-the-wall character, if you will. Um, you know, Steam, on the other hand, you just you can kind of like leave running or, you know, like whenever you load it up, it's like, oh, hey, there's an update for this game. And it will just like start downloading this update for this game. And you're like, oh, okay. Um, Origin will like keep all its updates in a bag. And, you know, like, stand in the alleyway. Yeah. Like, hey, 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 buddy. Hey, do you want to play SimCity? And you're like, no, 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 thanks. You know, no, you know I'm totally, I'm totally uh, knowledgeable of this because I played Mass Effect 3 multiplayer for, I don't know, a better portion of a year. So that's happened to me a lot. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, like, basically, when, you know, you're walking down the street and you pass that alleyway and that guy in the dirty trench coat is all like, hey, buddy, do you want to play SimCity? And finally, you're like, you know what? Yeah, I would like to play SimCity. He's like, okay, okay, okay. First, download all these updates. And then it, like, it, it launches the game launcher. Because it's, it's not enough that you have, like, you know, Origin as your game launcher. No, no, no. The game itself has to have a specific launcher that, like, connects you to, like, your SimCity Facebook and gives you your friend's profiles. And there's, like, an update wall. And you can, I don't know, tie a bow on someone and be like, you're my bestest friend in the whole wide world. And then give him a T-Rex and then have a picnic. You know, and, and, but, like, during that time, it's all like, okay, hang on. Okay, hang on. Okay, wait. Okay, I, like, I know you wanted to play this game. Okay, wait. Okay, hold on. Okay, hang on a sec. Okay, uh, hang on. So, uh, yeah. Fucking Origin, man. Yeah. So, I, I didn't actually get a chance to play SimCity, unfortunately. Um, but uh, let me tell you, I was riveted by Patch SimCity. It was the roller coaster experience of my week. Yeah. Um, Did you enjoy the uh, five minutes of uh, no way? I think it's about two minutes of uh, looping uh, looping audio. I didn't even. I did. Yeah. I I I turned my 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 speakers down because I just couldn't 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 deal with it. Yeah. Uh, but I did. I did actually get to play some video games as well. Um, not just. Patrick. What the hell you say? Wait, no. I'm I'm serious. Oh wait, I, I, I'm thinking uh, this is Leon talking. I keep I keep thinking it's Leon's the one that doesn't play games. Donnie plays games. I do. I do play okay, games sorry. when I get when I get the chance. I apologize. It's all right. I don't mind being uh, compared to Leon. His knowledge of film is enviable. Um, in any case, I got to play System Shock Two this week with with a few friends. Uh, now, when I say a few friends, rather than it being like one game of System Shock Two with a couple of friends, um, I got to play System Shock Two with one friend. 
a few times. So n- not like the same friend. What I mean is that I got to play like the first three hours of System Shock 2 with friend A, and then I got to play the same three hours of System Shock 2 with friend B, and then again with friend C. So I'm very, very acquainted this week with the first three hours of System Shock 2. Oh, you got the tutorial down like no one's business, right? I... Nah, I skipped by the tutorials, man. I was like, nah, I know what's going on. Fucking System Shock 2. Uh, legit, yo. Is speedrunning a part of a game a thing yet? Because you could just submit that. There are. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm pretty sure there are some games that have, like, a competitive speedrunning portion of it. System Shock 2, I hope, is, is not one of them. Because it is a game that, that should be savored. Yeah. And it it did get me, actually, it got me thinking about some... Some some interesting things about um, about co- some cooperative multiplayer gaming experiences, um, and and also just like online in general. Like I, I asked a question on my Twitter feed the other day that when is somebody going to make a survival horror game that actually implements voice comms as being a part of the gameplay? Not just in the sense that like you know uh, yeah, you can talk to people using an in-game app, but that your characters can only hear each other. When they're in close proximity to one another, that Daisy, that that your voice, I, it, it is Daisy, uh, Day Day Z. Yeah, sorry, Day Z. Haha, Day-Z. you said it right. Damn it, uh, uh, got a kitty. You know, but but like uh, uh, Day Z, Day Z is a at this point in time, it is it's a mod. Yes. You know, and there's a lot of things that uh, uh, it does that is constricted by the construction of, of Arma 2 specifically. I mean, we'll see what, what happens when Days adds its own release, but I'm so surprised that there aren't more horror games out there or multiplayer games with a horror edge that have not only just, le- like, localization in terms of being able to hear people's voices, but also using it against the players as a means of alerting enemies. Well, if you put it that way, how many horror multiplayer games do you know of that isn't DayZ? Well, there's Left 4 Dead, 1 and 2. Uh, there's Killing Floor. There's Resident Evil. Uh, okay, Left 4 Dead, maybe. Uh, Killing Floor, I doubt it because I don't think that's what they're going with for that because the zombies know you're there. Pointless to try and, like, stay quiet. I, I mean, I, I recognize that. I'm just saying is that, that these games, they do exist. They do, yeah. Do you guys uh, Resident- remember that? Do you guys remember that one game? I think it was a horror game where you actually controlled the main character with your voice. Uh, no. That sounds vaguely familiar. Uh, I just looked it up. I think it's called Lifeline. Is that it? Lifeline. Heard of it. Yeah, it's, it's defining like, aspect. It's my- defining aspect is that the player controls the game entirely by using a microphone to speak commands to on-screen characters. Yeah. That must be awkward. I wonder how that. Um, it's a it's a survival horror game for the PlayStation 2, and basically you are mission control for the characters, and you're like, look out, there's a monster, hide under there. Oh, that's... And that's um, yeah, great. I never got to play Lifeline. It says here under reception, uh, Game Informer listed Lifeline among the worst horror games of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, I remembered it existed, and then I looked it up, and then I remembered why I forgot about it. So, yeah, I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, Ten years ago. It was made in January 30th, 2003 in Japan. Ten years ago? Yeah, the technology uh, didn't, wasn't, yeah. probably didn't meet the uh, the aspiration. Yeah. I remember when I, before it came out, I remember hearing about it and being like, oh, that's a super cool idea. And then it just kind of disappeared, I guess, because it sucked. Well, you know, I, 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 it, it made me curious at least anyways, because there are some things that System Shock 2 does in its multiplayer. And, and this is one of the things that I, um, I, there's a lot of people who don't even know that System Shock 2 actually had multiplayer because it was a patch that was released after the closure of Looking Glass Studios. It was kind of like one last hurrah. It was something they always planned to do, but then LGS went down before they had a chance to release it officially, and then it, it just came out. <coughs> Pardon me. But both the good old games version and the version that just released on Steam have the multiplayer patch integrated into them, and and yeah, you can you can play multiplayer. I mean, voice comms aren't aren't embedded into the game because we're talking about you know the 1990s here. I might have been 2000. Pardon me. Um, but they do a lot of like interesting things in terms of encouraging. Like there there are some heavy RPG elements in System Shock 2. Um, in in terms of you know what branch of the military you decide to join and what abilities that winds up giving you. And over the course of the game, you get to upgrade your abilities. 
um, using these like cyber modules that, that get awarded to you when you complete quests or when you, you forge around and find them. And the more people that you add in the multiplayer, the more difficult specialized tasks become. So it becomes really important to make sure that you are specking your character in full knowledge of, of what it is that, that your friends are also doing with their characters. And they don't give you more ammo. They don't give you more guns. You know, there's no extra health or anything like that. So at, at certain points in time during the course of the game, it becomes a real brain twister to determine who gets what and, and who goes where. You know, like, for for a good period of the time when, when I was playing on the weekend with friends, I was not armed with anything more sophisticated than a wrench. Because a lot of the guys, uh, like, at least two of the guys that I was playing with on the weekend, it was their first time that they had ever played System Shock 2, and they were like, I think I'm just going to shoot things. And I'm like, okay, well, you're going to need me to supplement your abilities then, so I will do this instead. So I'm, I'm like handing ammo and handing guns off to these guys and taking care of their weapons and breaking into things and unlocking stuff and, and all of this. But then like as soon as a monster appears out of nowhere, I'm like, oh shit, and like, you know, would have to run because I just I wasn't capable of dealing with it. So it, 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 it feeds people into these roles that kind of like amplify um, the, the atmosphere of the game. Like I... I, I, I I don't know. I find it. I find it difficult to to really lock down in in terms of being able to describe it properly. Uh, but it did. It did make me wonder. Like there are, there are things that this game does so well for a game that's ten plus years old. That that so many games have been trying to do since then that just don't manage it. Video game design is a dying breed. So yeah, I, I got to play. I got to play a lot of System Shock too. Um, just like totally brilliant. I, you've got you've got no excuse to not to buy it. I mean, it's like eight dollars on Steam. I think it's on sale on GOG.com right now too. So if you want the DRM free version or you want the Steam version for whatever's your poison, it's it's a it's a brilliant experience. And don't listen to Austin who dismisses it out of hand because he seems to think that the only reason why people like it is because of nostalgia. I, I never said that. System Shock... Because he's wrong! Ah, all I ever said was that people who are super elitist about it because they, they're they like, oh, well, I played Bioshock back when it was called System Shock 2. <laughs> Let me adjust my monocle. That's the kind of people that annoy me. All right. Okay, that's fine. All right. They're all, they're all good, except for Bioshock have, 2. Yeah, I didn't like Bioshock 2 very much. Um, I, I also played... What else did I play? Um, actually, I played a little bit of FIFA. I got some FIFA in. FIFA. Got some, yeah, FIFA 13. Oh. Did you kick the ball? I did. I kicked the ball to another guy who kicked the ball to another guy who kicked the ball who took a dive and got a yellow card. <clears throat> it's pretty good though, isn't it? it I'm I, I'm enjoying it. I really you know, like, like it. it. It has been it has been a long time since I played a sports game and like FIFA. I'm just kind of like I'm plugging in like once a week or something like that, and I just like playing a match, just being like. Wee! It's fun, you know, like, I, I really like it. I'm probably not going to buy FIFA 14, because, you know, there's no reason to. You only need one of those every couple, you know, every couple of years. Yeah, like every, I feel like every five or six years, it's sort of like, maybe, oh, okay. It's like, how do you refine, how do you find soccer further? I, yeah, it's, uh, you know, they've got a, they've got a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Physics, ha, ah! engine yeah and uh you know player likenesses and things like that it's weird seeing myself out on the pitch that's kind of strange because actually fifa 13 fifa 13 is the first time that i've been able to use their like weird you know like use your face in the game thing is what oh a striker that's all everyone wants to be the striker well i mean it's you know it's a video game right did you guys see where i I tried to put uh garris into uh madden what in my Madden review, I was talking about the the game face thing that EA has, where you can import a, your face into the game. <laughs> I took like screenshots of me trying to get it to accept Garrus Macarian from Mass Effect. <laughs> Did it? Did no. It? Oh. It was, well, here's what it does. I figured it out. Is it basically just takes the the facial dimensions of the picture that you put into it, and then does that with like the skin tone and stuff you pick. So it won't actually take like the the Turian skin texture. You heard it here first, people. 
And racist centurions. <laughs> well, Even though they're owned by the same company. <laughs> Well, technically, they heard it when I wrote that review a long time ago. I doubt you guys read my Madden review, but... No. I I can't say that I did. I'm pretty excited about the new one, because... Fuck it, you guys don't care. Never mind. Keep going. (laughs) Um, I played... What else did I play? I played something else this week. Um, 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 uh, Jeez. Uh, I played a little bit of... A little bit of Skyrim. I'm still sort of, like, plugging away at that, trying to work my way to the DLC... Um, I still haven't played any of the Skyrim DLC. I'm just waiting for, like, okay, there's going to be a Game of the Year edition with everything included sometime. Just waiting for that. Yeah. Uh, Jedi Outcast. That's that's what wow. I'm Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, actually, I, I played a couple of things, actually, now that, now that I think about it. Yeah, I played some Jedi Outcast because uh, I, did, I did Thumb Wars with Sean the other day. And we were talking about Electronic Arts getting their hands on exclusive Star Wars licenses, and you know, and we were we, we spent a good hour or so like geeking out about old Lucas Arts releases and full throttle, you know, like how, yeah, Full Throttle, Grim Fandango, Monkey Island, Monkey Island Two, you know, like X Wing, Tie Fighter, the whole gamut, pretty much, and uh, and it it kind of gave me like the the old school uh, Lucas Arts itch, and I was like, God damn it, man. I need to I need to cut some shit up as a Jedi, and and so I decided to play uh, some some Star Wars Jedi Knight Two Jedi Outcast, um, which I still maintain I think is the the best Jedi game that that has been released to date. Um, uh, I've always hmm. I've always objected to um, uh, well when I say when I say the best Jedi game what what I mean is is that it. It adequately gives you all of the tools to be a Jedi and use them in real time. Like, I mean, I love the Knights of the Old Republic series. I do absolutely. Yeah, that's what I was going. Hmm. About. But the thing is, is that they're not they're not really like they're not really good Jedi games because the combat doesn't actually lend itself to being like I'm swinging a lightsaber. You know, like you click on enemies and you're sort of like attack. Or die. And then, yeah, and then you're, you know, just messing around with special abilities. Yeah. Like, Jedi Outcast, you're actually like, oh no, this is on! You know, yeah. and, and you like... Yeah, that's why I get... said, that's why I went, oh, okay, when you said action, like, real-time stuff, yeah, you, you'd yeah. be right. You'd be... Yeah, you know, and, and the reason why, like, I, I one of the reasons why I hated um, The Force Unleashed so much, I never played the second one, but one of the reasons why I hated The Force Unleashed so much was, is that immediately out of the gate, they try to give you this, like, uh, sense that you were super OP. It's like, wow, you were, like, the most powerful Jedi ever. But then immediately afterwards, it was like the game designers realized, they're like, okay, you can't actually be the most powerful Jedi ever, this game is going to be way too easy. So then they systematically basically break down your ability to to use your your lightsaber and your force powers until the plot requires you to pull a star destroyer out of orbit. Exactly. Yep. That game you know, that game is so bad it ruins the star it just ruins Star Wars. <laughs> it really does, you know. <laughs> you, know what, it, it like, you know what the reason that I hated uh Force Unleashed so much? It's actually I was okay with the game in general. Only at one level, every time, even though I uh, tried it on a new file, I uninstalled and reinstalled the game and did it again on a, fre- on a fresh install, it would always crash at one certain point, and that pissed me off. So uh, I, played it, I, th- I think we all played it on PC, and I have to say, I don't think the port was spectacular, oh, maybe. Actually, I played it, I did play it on on the PlayStation. I played it on the PlayStation. This is one of oh, those, like, rare crazy. titles. But uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it still sucked. Oh, wow. Well, No, it, it still sucked. They're actually, the, the bit where he pulls the Star Destroyer out of the sky, I got hit by this, like, weird, rare bug where it was like he wouldn't, he couldn't pull the Star Destroyer out of the sky. God damn it. So, so I'm like, I'm standing there, like, you know, trying to, like, haul this Star Destroyer, get it into, like, the right position, and I'm like, I think that's the right position. I, th- I think I've got it. They're like, you know, there's no little icons on the screen that are telling me to change it. And okay, fuck. All right, here come the Tie Fighters again. <laughs> it, it, like I spent like I spent like 30 minutes on this one scene before I'm like, wow, this is a really fucking long ass boss section. Like this is this is awful. This is terrible. 
Yeah, it's supposed, and I gave, it's supposed to be like the coolest moment in the game, but it's like easily the most laughable, terrible thing, even when it's not bugged. It was it was fucking terrible, and it, it but it was bugged for me, which exactly. made it like twice. It was twice terrible. It was like it was terrible to a factor. Like it was exponentially terrible. <laughs> there have yet there's not yet a math term invented that describes how terrible this like dealing with it was, you know, <laughs> and. But but my yeah my biggest problem with it was it was like be a Jedi who's badass but not that badass because that would make the game easy, and I hate it when a game gives you amazing powers and it says you can do all this amazing stuff except not here, and that was the Force Unleashed top to bottom it was like you can do amazing stuff except not here, but Jedi Outcast there was like there was no point in time, no point in time where it was like oh um you can't use Force Speed right now. There was no point in time where it was like, yeah, this stormtrooper won't get chopped to pieces with a lightsaber. There, there were times where you like run up against other Jedi with lightsabers, and it's like, fuck yeah, let's let's have a fucking fight. But as soon as you tagged that Jedi with a lightsaber, an arm comes flying off. They scream, they die, and you're like, yeah, I'm a Jedi. <laughs> it's it's unfortunate that the fiction doesn't lend itself particularly well to video games. I feel, but that's. But that's the thing, is that I feel like Jedi Outcast did it well. That's com- that's commendable in and of itself, I would I imagine. Absolutely. You know, like, that's that's a hurdle that has stymied so many game developers, like, after the fact and probably before. You know, like, being able to come... It's, it's, the, same, it's the same thing with Superman. Like, you know, you just... You can't really, like, make a Superman game. It's, yep. it's tough to do. And it's, it's not that you can't. It's just that it requires so much lateral thinking. It, it requires a game design that, that you can't sleep your way through. You need to sit down and say, okay, how are we going to do this? It's, just, it's probably just more work than most developers are worth putting, you know, to, to think it's worth putting into it. Or even capable. I mean, we, yeah. we do. Ha- no, I'm dead serious. We have to come to the. We have to come to the fact that, that that mediocrity is a thing, and that as much as we love video games, because we love video games, we are very biased by them. You know, like we're we're more inclined to like a video game because we love playing video games. But that doesn't mean that that all good video games are are really good video games. It just means that that we're kind of predisposed to like them and they come to us and we're like, yes, this is a video game. I love video games. It's why I've always objected to, to reviews saying things like, well, if you love RPGs, then you should play an RPG because this RPG is RPGist. You know, it's, it's, it's a cop-out. And we, we do need to come to the conclusion that it's, it's a creative heavy industry and there's really not a lot of really great creative people out there. There's people who do really well at refining other design ideas and, and people who can, you know, pick out certain kernels of, 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 of greatness and then apply them to different areas. But when it actually comes to somebody sitting down at a whiteboard and going, okay, you know what? I am going to pitch you a Superman game and it is going to blow your pants off so hard, your ass is going to be raw for a week. <laughs> Well, that's I mean, how Superman 64 was born. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's because so many game designers are coming up now, and the skills they're learning is, here's how you make a good modern military first-person shooter. Here's how you make an indie retro platformer. Here's how you make, you know what I'm saying? They're, lear- they're not learning, or at least not being, uh, there's no incentive to learn to think outside the box. Can you can you learn to think outside the box? I, I believe that you can be encouraged yeah, to think outside the box. perhaps that's a better way of putting it. But I think that there's, like, having an actual inherent talent is something, and I I do agree with you, Austin, I do agree that having inherent talent is probably something at at this point that the industry crushes. (laughs) It's just not, it's not profitable, usually, so it's not very interesting. I don't even... I don't even believe that it's not necessarily profitable, but I see it as something that isn't sought out. Mm. It's just, yeah, it doesn't have a high market value. It's not even, again, like, you know, I don't think it's necessarily a case of having a high market value. The thing is that I don't think it mixes with business expectations. Let's let's put it that way. I think that, that people are saying, well, you know, 
um, we could try this, and it might be good, but we know for a fact that this is going to be good. <laughs> that, you know, and it zooms out, and it's the pitch meeting for Homefront. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and, and this is this no, it, it, dead serious. That is that is totally it. That is totally the problem. I mean, we have, like, high-concept developers that get, like, you know, tons of money thrown at them, and, like, fanboys just surround them and love them, you know, like, and, and, and these people are always, they're not necessarily doing the same thing over and over again. Like, say what you will about Hideo Kojima, all right, and the fact that he's, like, he's banging out the Metal Gear games, but no two Metal Gear games are exactly alike. He reinvents himself perhaps to his detriment sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. 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 I say, yeah, like, I, I'm agree with you there. Say what you want about the overall quality of all the things he's ever put out. I, I, the, the world would be a far less rich place without him. So uh, to, get, to get back to my, my previous point here, I don't really believe that, that creativity is not a market asset. I think the problem is, is that you can't predict what creativity is going to do. And, and it's that fear of unpredictability that businesses shy away from because well, yeah. everybody's everybody's got it in their heads right now that we live in in this age where it's like oh nobody's spending any money it's it's that economy you know where i i really do believe that if you come to the table with the right product and you you demonstrate to people that you have the right product and it's a new look and it's a novel idea and it, it looks fresh and it looks interesting and you can't get it anywhere else that people are going to lay their dollars down for that product. I have a bridge to sell you. Yeah. Because <laughs> every day that passes, the more I look at firing indie developers or new concepts of games. Well, part of the problem, James, is that, that the quote-unquote indie developer scene is, is now like its own subgenre. Pretty much. You know, like, there's the super meat boy genre. There's the quirky manipulate time or gravity genre. There's the artistic bray genre. Yeah, you know, like, it... it, it and, and again, these people aren't blazing new ground, necessarily. All they're doing is making smaller budget copies of ground that's already been blazed. What's funny is as indie games gain kind of more widespread acceptance and notice and acclaim, they've kind of become their own smaller mainstream industry. And then there's like an underground, underground indie scene of people who don't like the indie people. Have you seen this? Yes, exactly. They're like, yeah, indie's too mainstream. It's pretty good. That's why they call them hipsters. Well, I mean, as... When wherever the money goes, I guess you're just gonna see conformity. It's kind of you'll just get a Russian stacking doll of, of the industry tiers as that never ends. Yeah, eventually it's just, it's just, it, it just for some reason you have the, the the largest one again for some unknown reason. You have no idea how it got there. Pops out I mean, a small it, one. It's even getting it's even getting to the point in time right now where uh, e, like even Kickstarter is falling to this elitism. Where it's like, you know, okay, um, fucking In Exile decided to kickstart their second game before their first Kickstarter was even released. Wow, really? And it's, oh yeah, like uh, fucking Torment. Yep, Wasteland 2. Tides of, Tides of Numenera. D- yeah, Wasteland 2's not even out yet, and they've already successfully kickstarted Torment Tides of Numenera. And there are people who are like, you know, how dare In Exile kickstart a second game, taking all this money away from, like, smaller Kickstarter projects that need these dollars to succeed, when they're like, this Kickstarter success story. And it's it's just like, wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's recent, all right. Like that's that is how can you like how can you possibly get like you know make the make the case that in exile is elitist? You you, you can't. But do we'll it. find a way. <laughs> if if anything, the human mind is unyielding. Yeah, so we'll find so, a way. In in any case, uh, you know, last month, um, sorry, getting even further back to the the subject matter of, of of what I've been playing, you know, I I feel like Jedi Outcast managed to hit this interesting creative balance of what it's like to actually be a Jedi, you know, and not have this like super overpowered, like it, it was it was a skill based game. Now you could you you could really learn to be a good Jedi. 
But, I, I mean, I feel that like superhero games, the best way that you can make a superhero game is not say, hey, the new Batman movie is coming out, we better make a Batman movie video game, but say, okay, let's make a Batman game from the ground up. What does that mean? And I think that's why Arkham Asylum and Arkham City did so well for themselves. Because they don't chase after somebody else's vision of Batman. They go, how, how would a Batman video game work? I, and then let's I like, do that. I like how this is like some kind of arcane wisdom. It's like, what you gotta do is think about what would make the best game and then make that. <laughs> it's like, whoa, well, my mind. Well, that is the thing, is that I don't really believe, just like you said, people are going into game design school and being like, okay, here is how you make a brawler. Here is how you make an indie platformer. Here is how you make a first-person military shooter. Like this, the the industry doesn't really bank on properly exploiting concept anymore, so much as it does filling expectations of what they think players want, and then uh, attaching that attempt to fill expectations to, you know, in this case, uh, a license like Star Wars. Yeah, and that's not that's not how you make memorable games. And and people don't fucking know it. People who are getting paid millions of dollars every year to predict business outcomes don't fucking know that creativity and and like new things that you can't find anywhere else that there's no fucking copy of that it, you're not just like oh I get it this is like X that that these things attract dollars, that they make money. Well, I'll, I'll say two things real quick. One is, just from a marketing perspective, it, it's helpful to have something to, to touch, you know, to, to have a touchstone, because then you'd be like, oh, our game is like God of War, so you kind of know what you're getting into. If there's nothing else like it, how do you sell it? Second point... Right, because Dishonored didn't do very well at all last year. Well, I'm not saying that it's always true. I'm just saying, from their perspective, you can understand why sometimes they're hesitant to have... Yes. But let us again remember what I said earlier in this conversation, that not all ideas are equal, and some people are stupid. <laughs> Most people are stupid. Second, second thing, specifically video game industry creativity, new console generations tend to kickstart some of that stuff. So I would be interested to see if the first year of the, the PS4 and the, I don't know what we're calling it this week. No. This week, this week we're going to call it the Xbox... We're going to call it um, the Xbox Tapioca Pump. Okay. And the the PS4 and the Xbox Tapioca Pump. I can't even. The, the, the P- <laughs> Johnny, I hate you. I, I called the XTP. <laughs> Works better. But do you see what I'm saying? That the PS4 and the Tapioca Pump might get some new IP and some new ideas because w- when you have an early console cycle kind of environment, people are more willing to take a risk both – developmentally and with their purchasing habits because they're like, oh, I, I bought this tapioca pump. I had to get something for it. Oh, this, you know. That may very well be true. It, I mean, you know, we, we may see that. Um, I, I, you know, but the thing is, is that even looking back, looking back to uh, the launch of the 360 and the PS3, it, I, I feel like the games industry was, a very, was still a different place back then. I mean, Call of Duty was not nearly the juggernaut that it is now. No, it wasn't. They had a rough. Well, I I wouldn't say it was a rough road getting to Call of Duty Four, where they just took off and never looked back. But the landscape, the landscape was real different, Austin, and it may not do the same thing this time. I, that would be unfortunate. I I'm not entirely sure. Well, yeah, I don't know. If, it could go either way. I don't know. What we're, I mean, what what have they shown of the next gen titles? We saw Infamous, Killzone. Those are those are old. There was that driving game, Drive Club, I think, but that looks just like Gran Turismo. So, yeah, they, have they shown any? Just, like, brand the ol- new? The only thing oh, I'm thinking of Mac. is Watch Dogs. Well, Watch Dogs is this gen. The, I know. I, yeah. It's going to be cross-gen, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it be will be. Sure. It's true. But I, I'm still counting it towards this one. It's, it, I don't think it was, you know, precipitated by this, this jump in technology. There's the, the only next-gen new IP that doesn't look derivative that I can think of is called Mac. So the PS4 game. Wait, is that the M A K? K N A C K. Okay, all right. Sorry, I thought you said Mac. No. Because I, sorry, I know there's an indie title. It's it's called it's Make because it's a long A. But I I wondered if we were talking about the same. But Knack is in like Nick Knack Paddywhack. Yes. Give uh, Austin <laughs> a bone. Leon a bone. I will give Leon all the gravity bone. 
Gravity Bones for Leon. Yeah, so in that game, I don't, know if you, I don't think you guys have seen it. Have you seen Knack, guys? It, it, no. no, I haven't. Okay, so not much to be gained from that conversation, but it doesn't look like mind blowing. It looks kind of like Little Big Planet. So, well, I thought right. well, that was going to be next gen was that um, what was it called? Uh, Remember Me. I thought that's that not, was next gen. Yeah, no, nope, that's that's thought, this gen. I that comes out next month. Yeah, I just thought on the on the BT list, I was like, it's coming out next month. Holy crap! I thought it was supposed to be one of the flagship titles for the next gen. Nope. Huh. Yeah, it does. Uh, we might, I think we talked about this last week. Remember Me looks like a pretty standard brawler with some like cool ideas that probably deserved a higher budget. So Every time I look at Remember Me, I just think of... Uh, I don't know if you guys ever played this game on the Nintendo 64. It's called Hybrid Theory. Sounds familiar. Isn't that a Linkin Park oh. album? Yes, it is. But it was also, you guys are awful. It was a very <laughs> poorly, it was a very poorly designed uh, uh, scrolling beat-em-up, a 3D scrolling beat-em-up. That I couldn't stop playing for some reason. Why? Wait, why are we terrible, Johnny? Because you both recognize the name of a Linkin Park album. You know what? Yeah. Linkin Park was back, back then. Yeah, I was about to say, they, they were actually pretty good for like two albums. Okay, wait, wait, wait. How old were you when these albums came out, Austin? Um, I can't even remember when they came out. Ten? James, how old were you it's when these albums came out? Your, I'm, I'm checking when they came out. I honestly can't even remember. It came out in 2000. I was 10. Was 13 years ago, that was... I was 15, 16. Okay, that explains it. Actually, I would have. it was before my birthday, so I would have been 9. Wait, two, yeah. yeah, 2000, I was 16. Yeah, yeah, that explains it. Does it? Yeah, because jo- Johnny was spared. <laughs> well, Johnny was like 25, so... He, he's looking down at us with uh, on his rocky chair and shotgun. I can't help it. Can't help it if you're wrong. Get off my land! But, Paul, I'm your son! <laughs> no son of mine trespass on me! <laughs> no son of mine missing the Lincoln Park. <laughs> Have you guys been... There was, like, all of last year, there was no good music that came out. And now there's, like, a million albums. It's, not it's true. Not. It's true. No, fucking Sun Lux released a new album last year. It was fucking amazing, and so did Moonface. Those, th- that sounds fake. Those sound like fake indie bands you just made up. No, Sun Lux is this guy Ryan Lott. He's like a Juilliard educated composer, mm-hmm. and he's like he's involved with a hip hop label out of California called Anticon. Dude writes some of the like craziest fucking music I've ever heard in my entire life. If you don't believe me, go to YouTube and look up Sun Lux. That's S O N space L U X. And a song called All the Right Things. Dude's nuts. And Moonface, Moonface as well as Spencer Krug, if you've heard of the band's Wolf Parade or Sunset Rubdown, Moonface is Spencer Krug's new, uh, new project. And he uh, is awesome. And the Moonface album that was released in 2012 called Heartbreaking Bravery was one of the best albums of 2012. It blows my mind. It's amazing. I would make fun of you, but I feel like your hipsterism is basically unmockable at this point. Like, you are a parody of, like, an elitist music snob. And it... No, you see, the difference between elitist music snobs and me <clears throat> is that elitist, elitist music snobs are like, oh my god, you haven't heard of Sun Lux? You're not even worth talking to. Whereas I am like, you haven't heard of Sun Lux? You should fucking listen to this song. This guy writes amazing music. Also, the elitists have tighter pants. <laughs> I was just gonna ask. And, yeah. horned rim, and black horn rim glasses. No, my my pants are not that tight. Ter- terrible hair. Wait, are you even wearing pants? I was under the impression that we all did this naked. I'm I I have one pant leg on. It's a long story. I have shorts and then wife beater on. Sorry. <laughs> and just for the record, before we totally conclude my spiel about what video games I played, I also played Hotline Miami because I love beating dudes' heads in. And I played a little Civilization V, because I was sort of refreshing it, because I know that the next expansion pack's coming out, and I'm like, ooh, let's have a look back. And, uh, yeah, the Egyptians are fucking kicking Attila the Hun's ass, and that's the way I like it. Is that the show for, so that, is that the, show for the week, guys? That's what I've been playing. Aren't you guys happy I played video games this week? For you. Woo! I, I guess that's a show. Oh, jeez, three hours. Holy crap, Magic is still making DLC. Just I'm just looking over my Steam and I'm like, Magic is still making DLC? Yep. Still buying this garbage? It's just like multiplayer maps. Yep. Oh my goodness. 
I would accuse you of being off topic, but we never have a topic. Right. So, Johnny. Yo. Do you want to talk about McDonald's? Next week, Fuddruckers. Because it's fun to say. <laughs> Fuddruckers. Mm. I've heard of that. I've never seen one. Hello, been... yellow. That's why I always associated with Fuddruckers. Hello, yellow in arcades. I... I just like I just like to say it. I've actually never been in a Fuddruckers. Yeah. So I just like to say Fuddruckers. That was where I usually wanted to go for my birthday when I was like... Eight to twelve years old. Fudruckers. Happy Oka. <laughs> <Pump. laughs>